Je teste ton portable. Pourquoi il n'y a pas Internet sinon bah, Non, mais le réseau, le réseau il bloque tout. En fait. tout. J'ai fait le test il y a deux jours et là, je ne sais pas pourquoi il y a le réseau. Mais euh, c'est arrivé à Charlie en plein cours. Par feu. Tout, tout tient sur ton portable. Et tu as, as beaucoup de liens ouais, ouais. Non, mais au pire, on s'alternera. Euh, en fait, c'est pas mal. Là. Tu peux. Tu, donc, là, là, là tu as, as, as le micro. Ils ont le micro de. Ouais, alors ils ont le micro d'ici. Donc là, ils m'entendent, là, par exemple. Ouais, tout le monde entend. Et là, tu as, as le. Alors, par exemple, tu as le zoom, il y a du monde sur le zoom Alors, sur le zoom, il commençait à avoir un peu de monde, ouais. La DD, ah, ben, ouais. Ben, Conversé, tu t'es dit, courage, ouais, Gab. Gab. Euh, ouais, ouais. Non, mais on se on s'attendra. Euh, ça, c'est notre petit sac qui nous envoie. Donc là, là, là tu as, as le micro, ils ont le micro de... Ouais, alors, ils ont le micro. Oh, hein. Donc là, ils m'entendent, par exemple. Et là, tu as le... Ouais. Alors, par exemple, tu as le zoom, il y a du monde sur le zoom alors, sur le jour, il commence à avoir un peu de monde, ouais. La DD, ouais. Conversé, tu te dis, courage, je te dis. Comment tu parles Ça, c'est le petit sac qui me parle. Enlève, enlève le son, au moins le ouais, son YouTube. Bon. Alors, le et euh, YouTube, ce qu'il faut faire, c'est couper le micro à, à tous, les, tous les gens Zoom. Ça, je peux le faire, pardon. Je crois que c'est une option. Si, si, tu es animatrice, tu peux couper le Zoom. Tu fais là-dedans, là, option. Option. Et tu dois pouvoir mettre. Je suis pas sûr que ça serait ça, que je puisse me muter tout le monde. Si, si participant, participant. Pas dans participant. Je demande juste euh, non, euh, désactiver au micro. Bah oui, sinon tu peux faire ça. Hein. Et là, tu, tu peux. Ah ouais, putain. Non. Sauf. Euh, Attends, sauf mais je vais demander de désactiver. Sauf pas mal. Muet tous. En fait, c'est ça. c'est que as pas, elle a pas, Donc toi, tu, là, tu peux gérer tous les micros et la vidéo. Ok, ok, ça marche. Donc, euh... Salut Lucas, c'est bien Yo J'ai mis tout le monde en demi comme ça. Voilà, on fait le dernier réglage, là. Petite diffusion en direct, là. Ça part. Mais ça a bugué, là. YouTube ne répond pas. C'est bon. C'est bien. En vrai, c'est bon. En vrai, on peut il y en a deux qui sont en bas devant et trois en lumière. Mais je vais utiliser ça, c'est un rapport pour le plaisir. Je ne l'utilise pas, non, c'est un rapport pour le plaisir. Tu l'utilises, il t'avait dit de le mettre devant Non, c'est ça. Ça fait 30 ans que tu m'en aies dit, non C'est quelqu'un qui tient. Tu as tout le temps à la fin, non Oui, pour la photo. Ah, mais c'est. Jamais été aussi bien sacré, tu vois. C'est vrai, pour les mariages. Ah, je suis pas bien. J'ai failli remettre le. C'est vrai. Salut, gars. C'est vrai. Des gens français. Moi, j'ai quelqu'un qui est pas. Hé, ça va Yo, Mounir, ça va Ça va bien, et toi T'es prêt Ouais, je suis prêt, je suis prêt. T'es dans la voiture, là Qu'est-ce que tu fais <rire> ouais, bah, Je rentre à la maison, je rentre à la maison. J'avais euh, peur de manquer ta soutenance, hein, que je me suis convaincé dès maintenant. D'accord, cool. Bah, super, bah, ça va durer un petit moment, mais euh, ça va t'intéresser, je pense. Oh, oui, bah, c'est sûr, c'est sûr. Il y a, toi, y a tu Alan. Combien de temps Pardon Tu commences euh, dans combien de temps À 15 heures, là. Donc, dans quelques minutes, je vais me connecter, là. Ok, d'accord. Bah, je te souhaite euh, de réussir, que ça se passe bien, que tes questions soient faciles, puis je, je suis sûr que tu vas, tu vas les détruire. Hein. Merci, merci Mounir, à bientôt. Tu sais qu'Alan est, est rapporteur là euh, Alan Oui, Alan, c'est un, un des rapporteurs de, de thèse. Ah, ok, ok. Bah, Alan, ces questions, euh, ils sont euh, sur, sur le domaine. Il va, ça ne va pas être compliqué. Je lui dirai. <rire> ouais, ouais, je penserai, je penserai. Ok, ça marche. Bah, merci, j'ai préparé tout ça. Là. Bah, je mets tout mon nom. Bon courage. Voilà, tout le monde est Ça bosse fort Non, c'est bien là Là, c'est fort là Ça vous trouve que c'est fort Je vais baisser le micro, ça va être mieux. Ouais, 
que c'est clair au niveau de la salle, parce que je vais parler après comme ça tout le temps là. C'est très bien. Ok. Alors on a le jury aussi. Si tu veux, je peux te... Non, non, mais c'est moi. Par contre, ils sont où les, les gars de l'équipe là Il est pas non plus. Les, les Nigériens et tout Non. Nous, on est gars. Celui qui parle. Nous, Stefano. Ah, Stefano est. Ah, there is a candidate. Ok. So, vous faites des tests Et see you, see you soon. We just lose the room. See you. Ok. Je rentre prochain. Ouais. Um, I just wanted to know if you have some echo. C'est chiant en fait, mais, euh, mais là c'est une des branches, il n'y a plus la caméra. Enfin, ouais, donc, euh... si je la remange, ouais, ouais c'est juste que ça va juste couper pendant ah. quelques secondes. Quoi. Bah, oui, donne la main.
des éventuelles questions à vous poser. So it must be in English, I just realized. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. So uh, we do have uh, now your presentation and uh, we will then give uh, the to the viewers for eventual questions and so please uh, go, go on with the presentation. Okay. So thank you and welcome everyone. Um, I would like to thank uh, FH for the collaboration of, of this, uh, for this thesis uh, entitled Relationship between Thermomechanical Performances of Bituminous Binders and Mixtures with Focus on Binder Aggregate Adhesion. It was supervised by Professor Di Benedetto and Sonzea. So here is the outline and uh, second parts. I will start with an introduction. Then we will talk about the materials and experimental devices we use. Uh, I will introduce four campaigns, uh, four ex experimental campaigns, and we will uh, then conclude and uh, go on perspective. So, um, the road uh, transportation system is the, the, uh, the most dominant uh, mode of transport in France, uh, either in domestic passenger or in domestic freight, freight land. Um, the, length, the total length of the French road network is uh, more than 1 million kilometers. It represents uh, an industry, industry turnover of about 12 billion per year, 12 billion euros per year. And uh, we use a lot of bituminous mixture uh, to maintain those roads. So if you look at the pavement structure, um, so the pavements are divided in several course, and the top courses are often made, made of bituminous mixture. So good performances of uh, mixtures are essential uh, for the road durability. What determines the thermochemical performances of mixtures? Uh, well, obviously we have uh, the bitumen, the aggregate, but also the binder aggregate interface or adhesion uh, between those two. So the objective, uh, main objective of, of uh, my thesis was uh, to establish the links between the bitumen and mixture formatic performances, and uh, especially look at the role of binder aggregate adhesion. If we uh, list the thermomechanical performances of mixture, we have linear viscoelastic behavior, fitness, resistance to fatigue, water sensitivity, aging, resistance to thermal cracking, and resistance to rutting. These are the main uh, performances. In my thesis, I focus with, on the linear viscoelasticity, resistance to fatigue, and water sensitivity. We divided our work in uh, four experimental campaigns. The first campaign is uh, we look at the influence of bitumen and aggregates on nature performances. Second, we will look at the behavior of bitumen and mastic made with glass beads. Then we will introduce a new interface, interface test on bitumen and film. And then finally, we will look at the influence of binder aggregate adhesion on nature performances. So that not, not all results from the manuscript are presented here. Let's look at the materials and the experimental devices we use. So, first the material. We use uh, seven, seven, uh, sorry, 50, 70 of two different origins, noted B and S. And uh, we, we also use the modified version of them with a 3% polymer modification. Those, those uh, bitumen I use are used in campaign one and two. And the bitumen B uh, is the reference uh, bitumen for all campaigns. If we look at the aggregates for mixture, we have a bunch of different aggregates. Uh, so CO is uh, the micro, a microgranite porphyry rock. Then BI is a granite rock. CR is a basalt rock. Uh, HL is a limestone. And uh, BE is reclaimed cement concrete from various origin. Um, and in addition to that, we have uh, aggregates that were submitted to survey treatment with anti stripping uh, agent, pro stripping agent, and control aggregate that are we introduced in campaign four. Uh, the CO uh, aggregate is a reference agent. Then uh, we have the filter from Mastics that were uh, chosen to be silica glass beads of a small diameter, uh, small diameter, comprised between 40 and 70 micron, with or without surface treatment. Now we look at, we look at the bituminous fixes. Uh, we have first the Mastics, which were made uh, made of 60% uh, in volume of bitumen B and 40% in glass, uh, glass B. We have three different mastics, 
one without uh, surface treatment, one with anti-stripping uh, uh, agent, and the other with pro-stripping agent. Regarding bituminous mixtures, we, for all the mixture, we have the same grading, grading curve, which was, uh, which was, which come from a French LME, high volumes mixture. Uh, it was a hot mix fabrication for all, with French wheel compactor for all mixtures. And here is how, uh, how it's uh, written. So the first measure in indicates the bitumen type, one of the four rules we use. Then we get the aggregate type, and then we put the binder content, uh, which was which was which ranged between 4.8% and 5.8%. In total, we tested 19 mixtures. Let's look at the experimental device um, for bitumen and mastic. So at FH, um, they had the DSR, the dynamic shear reemitter. And at the ENCPT, we, we had the, the annular shear reemitter. Um, it's uh, an original test that was de designed here a few years ago. And uh, it allows to uh, apply a homogeneous shear uh, stress and strain in, uh, on an uh, annular uh, specimen of pitchin. Um We can also measure uh, precisely the temperature in, uh, in, the, in the specimen with four thermocouples. And we, we add to this um, a new chemical test that I will introduce in next week. Let's look at the experimental device for mixtures. We have the classical 2.2 blending test on trapezoidal specimen, and also the indirect indirect sensor test uh, that was provided by, provided by FH. At the NTP, we had the tension compression of, on the cylindrical specimen. Now we will jump to the first campaign of this studies. Uh, when we look where we look at the influence of the bitumen and aggregate on nature performance. So uh, we used uh, 16 different, um, different mixtures um, and we tested stiffness with the two point bending apparatus. We look at the complex volumes at uh, 15 degrees and uh, 10 hertz. We look at resistance fatigue um, with the volar, uh, the volar parameters. And we look at the water sensitivity, uh, and especially at uh, the indirect, indirect sensitive stress ratio, and uh, noted, noted uh, IGSR. And for the bitumen, we look at also uh, the recent fatigue with the classical approach. So um, what, what, we look, uh, what we are looking for is the influence of bitumen, the influence of aggregates, and also the link between bitumen and mixture fatigue. In addition to that, we have a deeper analysis of uh, bitumen fatigue tests, which are not common. Let's look at the influence of bitumen on mixture performances. Um, we can divide our uh, mixture uh, in a two to the power of three factorial plan. The first variable, A, uh, referred to the bitumen type, uh, B versus uh, S. Second, uh, B, so the variable B, uh, and this, um, referred to, um, refers to the polymer modification. And the third uh, refers to the binary content. They all use the same aggregate CO for the whole mixture. So with this plan, we can apply um, multi-factorial multi regression, um, which is uh, written here. So why is our variable, let's say, uh, let's say the complex modulus. And uh, we have the direct effect of uh, those uh, variables and also the cross effect. So we can estimate those effects by calculating uh, the coefficient beta uh, for all the, these uh, variables. So let's, here's an example for uh, the stiffness. So we can see that uh, the bit, Beta are the, uh, the greatest for uh, um, the variable A and C, namely uh, the binder type and the binder content. So these are the, these are the parameters that matters when uh, we look at stiffness. Now let's look at the other performances. So if we look uh, on, the, um, on the right, uh, we what's our sensitivity? We can see that the binder type and the polymer modification are the the main parameters, but we, we get also a uh, lot of cross effects when we look at AD, the influence of AD. Regarding uh, resistance fatigue, um, we have a hierarchy of uh, bitumen properties. So we can see that the binder uh, type is the most important one. And then we, we got polymer modification, and then we have binder content. So um, with this approach, uh, we can measure and uh, we can measure the cross effect that, that can be important. Now let's look at the influence of aggregate on mixture performance. 
So now we have a, a two by five plan. So we use two, two different bitumen, DM, which is known for good fatigue performances, and S, which is known for poor fatigue performances. And we used our five aggregates that I described earlier. Let's look at the results on the, the same uh, thermomechanical performances. So uh, I've uh, drawn in blue uh, the, the mixture with vitamin DM and uh, in orange, the mixture with vitamin S. So uh, there is a lot of data here, but let's focus on the resistance fatigue and especially SN6. Um, we can see that the, the main uh, determin determining uh, parameter, parameter is the binder, binder, binder type, but we have a lot of cross effects as we can see. Uh, the difference of, uh, of uh, change in, uh, in this um, in epsilon 6 depends a lot, of, a lot on the, the aggregate type. It's also visible for the water sensitivity. Now let, let's look at the link between the vitamin and mixture fatigue performances with polar analysis. So we use our seven, uh, 16 mixture that uh, I pre previously uh, introduced, and uh, we perform a classical analysis of fatigue uh, where N, N, NF is the number of cycles uh, until fa failure of the sample, and uh, Fn6 and B are our, our regression parameters. So, namely, Fn6 is the deformation uh, you, you obtain when you have a failure at uh, 1 million cycles, and the so slope B is the slope of the regression. So, how, uh, how are um, what is, the, what is the relationship between those uh, parameters? So if we plot the uh, turn six of mixture against gamma six of bitumen, uh, we have the, the right, uh, the left figures, left and side figure, and I uh, also plotted the uh, of mixture against B of uh, bitumen. So overall, we have a fair correlation between the mixture of turn six and gamma of turn six with an apparent four of uh, 0.5 function rela relationship. There were no apparent relationship for the B, the slope uh, correction, but uh, we found out that we found out that uh, the B for bitumen uh, was comprised between minus 0.28 and uh, minus 0.35, which uh, confirm confirmed some rare studies on the subject. Finally, I think uh, the fatigue performances of bitumen could be a good predictive parameter for the corresponding mixture. Let's look at what happened. Uh, uh, during fatigue test of, uh, on bitumen, evaluated with DSR. Um, so here are the results for two different loading amplitude. Um, we can notice at low uh, strain amplitude that there is a modulus increase. It was identified as a steric hardening. Um, and we, we can also look at the very beginning of the test where we have an initial drop of uh, modulus. And if we plot, if we if we calculate this initial drop of modulus between the first cycle and the cycle 1000, um, we obtain different value depending on the on the amplitude. So what we did is that we look at what happened when we change the amplitude uh, on this no, uh, on this initial drop of modulus. So here is the normalized initial drop of modulus, which is divided by the initial modulus, and uh, here is the result against uh, in, as a function of uh, uh, the strain amplitude. So we see that we have um, an initial modulus class, which is a square function of the, of the amplitude. And I would like to remind that uh, a square function of the amplitude is uh, proportional to the dissipated energy in the material, uh, which is itself proportional, proportional to uh, the temperature increase in the material in the adiabatic case at the very beginning of the test, uh, which is itself proportional to the change of modulus uh, due to temperature dependence. So, um, with all that considered, we thought that uh, the initial modulus that uh, initial modulus lost is at least partially dominated by temperature effects. And in conclusion to campaign one, um, we so we, we perform a parametric study on the mixture performances. We uh, establish a hierarchy among pro uh, bitumen properties with cross effects. And uh, we also we have seen the non-negligible non dependence on aggregate nature. Um, when we look at resistance fatigue evaluated with uh, of bitumen evaluated with DSR, uh, we, we obtain consistent results with specific classical analysis. And uh, we found out that uh, there is a good correlation between bitumen gamma 6 and mixture of 6. Now let's go to the second campaign. Bitumen and mastic made with glass beads. 
So our materials were introduced earlier. Uh, our four bitumen and one, one, one matic with 40% that beats. We look at uh, different properties, LV behavior with complex modulus test, nonlinear behavior with trained amplitude sweep test, and fatigue behavior with load and rest period uh, test noted uh, LRP. Let's look at linear viscoelasticity. So here are the tests, uh, the, the complex shear modulus test we designed uh, with the SR at TTPE. Uh, we have a range of uh, temperature, uh, um, a range of temperature uh, between minus uh, 15 and 60. Um, so for each temperature, we apply a 10, 10 minute temperature ramp, and then we observe um, a four hour for term thermal equilibrium. At the end of this uh, equilibrium, uh, we perform a fre frequency sweep frequency sweep test, um, uh, ranging from uh, 0.01 hertz to 10 hertz. With GSR, it's pretty much the same thing, but the range is, uh, is greater from minus 20 to 70 uh, that, that uh, required um, two different geometries for the, 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 the sample. So we look at the complex modulus, uh, the shear complex modulus. The objective is to characterize the LV behavior of bitumen and mass. Uh, we can model the, this uh, LV behavior with the 2S2P1D model, which is two spring, two power brick elements and one dashboard, which was uh, developed by this very team uh, a few years ago, a few decades ago. Um, <laughs> so the complex modulus is uh, modeled by uh, seven constants, and the uh, two constants accounts for um, the time temperature superposition principle. Uh, let's talk about the, the, the two important constants, G0 and G00. They represent the asymptotic moduli. Uh, so G0 is the moduli, uh, the glassy moduli when uh, the temperature uh, is uh, tends to uh, towards, uh, tends toward, um, is, is the, uh, uh, tends toward minus infinity, and uh, the frequency is, uh, tends toward infinity. And uh, G00 is the static modulus, uh, is the opposite when the temperature is uh, increased and when the, the frequency is really low. Um, let's look at the result we obtained with uh, DSR and ASR on bitumen B. So here um, on the left is the cocoa plot of the, of, uh, of the result with bitumen B, and on the right is the black space of the same result. What we can see is that we obtain different asymptotic moduli uh, with our with, uh, between those um, two devices. Um, when we look at uh, the results, it appears that DSR yields Erroneous results at low temperature and high frequencies, uh, because the, uh, the, the value for the ASR was confirmed by uh, other precise tests such as methylene. So ASR, but ASR is, is limited in range and precision at high temperature and low frequencies. That's why we thought that the best idea was to combine the results of those tests to obtain uh, combined uh, to obtain the nice curves. Um, so here is the isotherm of normal complex modulus. Uh, of the combined results, and we can build the master curves of uh, the complex models uh, by determining, de determining the uh, shift factor 80. The shift factor can be modeled by the, the value in uh, William London very low. It's classical. Uh, and here are the results for all of, uh, our vitamins. Um, so the, the main finding is that uh, we have a good 2S to P1D fit for uh, most of them, except maybe for polymer modified vitamin high temperature and low frequency. And uh, we can notice that the asymptotic modulus G00 is not null for the polymer modified bitumen. Now, if you look at the, what happened for the mastic and its constituent bitumen B, um, we can introduce the normalized modulus G norm, uh, which is normalized by the, the asymptotic moduli G0 and G00. Um, if we look at the results, they are exactly the same uh, on the black space here. So that means that uh, they share, uh, so the mastic inherits some of the LV properties uh, from the, the constituent bitumen. They share four 2S to P1D constants, and um, they also share the same, sorry, sorry, the, sh the same shift factors and the WLF, uh, WLF parameters. Um, so let's look now at nonlinear behavior. What we designed is a strain amplitude sweep test that was performed before the LRP test that we introduced just, uh, just after. 
So it was performed with S only, and the simple idea is to uh, apply two cycles uh, at different amplitudes and to, to see the effects on the, on the measured models. So the lowest amplitude was, at the, was chosen to be in the LDE domain, and the second highest amplitude was the, also the amplitude for the LR, LRP loading amplitude. So the results are here uh, for the vitamin B. Um, we have uh, a good quadratic, sorry, a good quadratic function fit for both uh, the normal complex modulus on blue, in blue and the in, for the phase angle in, uh, in red. And uh, the effect of non-linearity could be estimated to be 3% uh, on the norm of complex modulus and uh, 1.7 degrees on the phase angle for uh, amplitudes ranging uh, up to 12,500 uh, 12, uh, micro deformation. Let's look at uh, the behavior the behavior during the load and rest periods. So this is the RRP test. The idea is uh, we start with uh, the origin, original uh, material, uh, which is that uh, original initial modulus J, uh, G, E, D. And then we, we apply a first lo uh, loading period, L1, uh, to obtain half of the initial modulus, uh, which is lost. Then after, afterwards, um, we, uh, we observe a rest period of uh, five days, during, during which we perform discontinuous uh, mod uh, measurement of the modulus, so we can mo uh, monitor the recovery. Then we have a second fatigue uh, period with 10,000 cycles, second rest with 24, 24 hours, and then con uh, continuous fatigue until failure. The objective is to separate and quantify the phenomena, which, are, which could be reversible or irreversible, uh, according to RRP. These are the results obtained with PGMD. So we start with our initial modulus at low uh, amplitude. And then this is the, the first, this is what happens during the first loading period. period. So we can observe that there is a nonlinearity gap uh, between the initial modulus and the, the modulus calculated at cycle three of fatigue. Then we get the recovery. We can see that we recover uh, entirely the modulus. And then we apply the second loading, second recovery, and cell loading. So here are the, the points of, uh, uh, um, of loading and, and rest. So we can see that we have a, a rapid decrease of modulus at the beginning of the loading, and then it slows down. And it's the same for the rest, but the, but the other way around. It, it uh, recovers uh, really fast at the beginning, and then it slows down. Overall, uh, what is important to, to notice is that uh, we have, after a five-day rest, um, five rest, after 50% of modulus loss, there is a total recovery of the models. Let's look at what happened during loading uh, on the temperature, which was measured uh, directly into the specimen. So. Um, we start at the initial uh, temperature of 10 degrees, which, which is the thermal chamber uh, temperature. And then we see the increase is quite uh, rapid at the beginning. And we obtain a uh, temperature increase, quite impressive uh, temperature increase of, increase of uh, 3.5 uh, degree Celsius degrees. So a lot of energy, uh, this dissipated energy goes into heat. heat. And uh, we can actually correct um, the, the the effect of temperature increase uh, on the measured modulus with, uh, with the twist to the 1D model. Let's uh, look back at the, the result of nonlinearity. So at the same, um, as for the correction of temperature, we can actually correct the nonlinearity effect on the, the, the measured modulus uh, with, uh, the, with the quadratic function we introduced uh, earlier. So if we correct, correct the effect of temperature and nonlinearity on the modulus, we obtain this uh, graph on the right. And uh, let's look at what, uh, what we can uh, deduce from that. So here is the corrected modulus in the black space. Um, so at the beginning, beginning of the loading period, uh, we observe a fast, um, fast decrease of modulus at, and uh, increase of uh, phase angle. It was inter interpreted as a pictotropic uh, breakdown. Then we have a slow de decrease of modulus at constant uh, phase angle, which was identified as fatigue damage. 
and then we have the fast recovery during the, the beginning of the rest um, uh, with a fast recovery of normal of, uh, complex modules and a decrease of phase angle. It was identified as a dextrophic buildup. And then we have uh, finally the slow recovery of modules at constant uh, uh, phase angle, which was uh, supposed to be micro -packing. Overall, uh, the change of uh, phase angle and the duration of the phenomena uh, are from primordial to separate them uh, during cyclic loading. We should not just look at the normal complex modules. Finally, for this RFP, I would like to uh, look at what happened uh, during the loading period and what, what, how it evolves the, um, uh, the, comp the correcting modulus. So if we look, um, these are um, two different amplitudes for the same bitumen. Let's look at uh, what happened on the left. Um, so we have basically um, between, if we, if we compare the first loading curve and the, the second loading curve, we have the same moduli but different rate of damage. So what it, what it does tell, tell us is that uh, the material appear, appears altered and more prone to fatigue, even if the, the modulus is totally recovered during rest period. Um, in conclusion to this campaign too, uh, the 2021 model successfully modeled the LB behavior of vitamin mastics. Uh, the mastic inherited the LB properties from its constituent vitamin. Um, the, loading, the load and rest period test uh, allowed us to quantify the reversible uh, and irreversible phenomena, namely nonlinearity, self heating, and dixotropy for reversible phenomena, and damage for uh, irreversible phenomena. Heating phenomenon was also observed over long rest periods, but damage permanently alter the binders, even if uh, the modulus was totally recovered. Um, the third campaign of this studies uh, will, will introduce a new interface, interface test on vitamin filtering. So what we did is that uh, we designed a, a really simple geometry with uh, two rock cylinders that, uh, and a, a vitamin thin field in, in between. Um, we used uh, extensometers to measure the the strains in the film and the rock, and uh, we use metallic foil spacer to ensure the, the thickness of the film. So here is how the interpretation is done. Um, we have a couple, the, the trick is to use a couple of uh, short and long extensometers, and uh, with difference of displacements measured during actual test between those two, we can actually estimate, we can measure uh, the, the strain uh, in the rock. And if we know the strain in the rock, we can deduce uh, the effect of the strain in the rock from the displacement obtained with, let's say, the short extensometer. So we can obtain the displacement, displacement which is due to, to the de uh, deformation of the film. Then we obtain the, the deformation of the film. And um, by knowing just the force or the, the stress in the different phases, we can, uh, we can estimate the mod moduli of the rock and the film. So one should not notice that it's these moduli are different from the actual moduli of the uh, uh, bitumen or uh, the rock, um, as we will see later. This is how the specimen were done. Um, we use metallic, as I said, we, we use metallic foil spacers, and uh, we just pour hot bitumen, and uh, we, we just place the second, uh, second top part of, the, of the, the sample, so the bitumen can pour uh, out of the, the, the interface. And um, after we clean everything, uh, we use compression uh, springs to ensure that the interface was all, always in compression and we don't destroy the, the thin film. The setup on the, on the press is quite straightforward. We just glue the, the, the sample to the first metallic cap and the second metallic cap is uh, glued directly on the press to avoid any resi residual stress. Let's look at the identical solution for uh, an infinite aspect rate. Uh, for infinite aspect ratio of the film with non-rigid rock. So we, we are in isotropic linear elastic case for both phases. And uh, our we have the, uh, the, the stress and strength tensors for our variables. Um, a big uh, hypothesis there is the homogeneity by phase. So it doesn't change uh, uh, depending on the, on the location. And um, regarding the equation, we have uh, symmetry that uh, gives us a lot of equation but also uh, the constitutive equation of uh, isotropic linear elasticity, conservation law, 
and the boundary con conditions, which are really important. So what we what we uh, assume is that the deformation of the the radial deformation of the bitumen was the same as the radial deformation of the rock. With all that combined, we can uh, we can uh, calculate the antical modulus of bitumen, which we no note, uh, noted here, EPO. So if this model is, uh, so in the case where, where the, the rock is much stiffer than the odometric modulus, the, 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 the bitumen tin film, um, so in the case where the, the modulus of the, of the rock is much higher than the odometric, odometric modulus of the bitumen, we actually have an odometric test on bitumen. So we want to, 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 uh, to see that uh, if this uh, analytical solution is uh, re realistic. So what we did is that we si uh, simulated the, the very experimental test uh, we, we used later. Um, so we also simulate uh, with the finite, finite element uh, um, software console. We also simulated the short and long extensometers uh, couple uh, to reproduce the same experimental condition. And the simulated actual modulus that we obtained uh, with this combination of long and short extensometer is not in uh, e First, let's look at the stress and strain homogeneity, which ensure our, the validity of, uh, of our analytical analysis. So for standard values of, uh, uh, for the rock and the bitumen, it was really okay. Uh, we had uh, homogeneous, uh, homogeneous stress and strain everywhere except at the very, uh, very edge of the, the bitumen thin film. But when we have, when, let's say we have uh, extreme values for the, the odometric modulus of bitumen B, then uh, our analysis is no longer valid. Let's look at the influence of aspect ratio uh, and, on the, and of bitumen uh, properties on the simulated modulus. So what we did is that we compared the simulated modulus to the theoretical modulus and uh, we, made a lot of uh, different cases with different uh, um, shear modulus for the bitumen and also complex uh, uh, portion ratio for the, the bitumen. This is what we obtained for different values of the complex of uh, the portions ratio and modulus. And on the right, uh, we have the same uh, cases, but with uh, just uh, the ratio between the simulated modulus and the actual modulus of the bitumen. So if we look at the, if we, if we, look at, if we compare what we, what we, in what case we are, we are with our experimental, experimental test, we have uh, an aspect ratio, which is close to one uh, divided by uh, two, uh, uh, 266. And uh, for, for the, this, this region, uh, the simulated modulus matches really well the theoretical modulus for most uh, values of bitumen and the portion ratio in, and the modulus. Only for extreme values, it, uh, it induces errors. And uh, we can see on the right that the, modulus, the simulated modulus rapidly increase, uh, increases when the bitumen tends toward incompressibility. Let's look now at the results, uh, experimental results we had. So uh, I've displayed here um, the master curves of the normal complex modulus and the master, master curves of phase angle for our uh, film. And uh, also, I've displayed the, the to a 2 d model of the constituent bitumen of the film, just to compare. So the results for the film uh, is that uh, we observed the time, uh, time temperature superposition principle, but the, the shift factor was different than the, with the shear modulus T. And uh, overall, it was really difficult to test uh, many temperatures because we had the strain precision limitation and also the bitumen was really tough, so even uh, tougher than the rock. But with, with, what, with what we obtained, um, we can compare the, the modulus. Uh, so we observed the modulus uh, ratio. So the ratio of the modulus of the film uh, divided by the shear modulus of the constituent bitumen. And we can see that uh, this ratio could be really high for a, a high temperature. And if we, if we assume that our uh, test gives us the odometric modulus of the bitumen, we are able, able to, to calculate the position ratio of the bitumen with uh, values near incompressibility with high precision. In conclusion to this campaign three, uh, we have a successful fabrication and testing of the thin film uh, specimen. The 
finite element simulation validated the theoretical approach. And uh, our test actually gives us the elementary modulus of the determinant for most cases, uh, which allows us to calculate the Poisson ratio with a really uh, with a high precision near in incompressibility. This is the last part, uh, the last campaign of my thesis. So we will look at the influence of determinant aggregate uh, of binder aggregate addition on mixture performances. So the approach is quite uh, quite original. We, we wanted to modify the surface of substrates with silanes. I will introduce this, uh, this later. The question is, can the improvement or the deterioration of binder aggregate adhesion alter the thermomechanical performances of mixture and mastics? And if yes, how much? What we did is that uh, we designed and we produced uh, different uh, aggregates, uh, different mixtures with silent treated aggregates. So we had the, the control mixture um, and the mixture with anti-stripping and mixture with the post-stripping agent and also the reference mixture to, uh, to compare. And also we also did that for mastic. Uh, so what is uh, the silentization procedure? So basically we, you take your, your aggregates um, and you plunge them into a base solution made mainly of ethanol and then we add the silane that I will uh, introduce just after uh, in small quantity. After three hours of reaction with manual steer steering, we just put it on the hot plate and the, the solution is evaporated and the, the aggregates are then dried. So we obtain silane treated aggregates. If we look at the molecular uh, aspect of the surface, we have uh, linked to the surface with the silk sand bond, the new functional chain with new, with new surface properties. So same aggregates, but different affinity with bitumen, hopefully. Um, so we use two different silane, uh, one anti-addition uh, promo promoter, uh, which is uh, lipophilic, and uh, the other was the pro-stripping agents, uh, so addition on, the, addition on the minor, which is lipophobic. Both of them are hydrophobic, as, as we will see. The question was, uh, can we assess the silentization procedure? So we uh, uh, collaborated with our lab, uh, different teams of the, of the lab, and we came up with a solution with the surface analysis techniques. We used uh, X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy to see if we have an atomic change of, uh, a change of atomic composition at the very surface of the, the aggregate. And uh, we also used the contact angle method to see the properties of the surface uh, has changed or, or not. Let's look at the result of X XPS. I will be really quick on that. Uh, so the idea is to uh, bombard the uh, surface of our modifier or control uh, aggregate with X-rays. Uh, the X-rays ex uh, um, excite the, the atom at the very surface of our aggregate. And then the atom by photoelectric uh, phenomenon um, throws away uh, electrons. We can measure the energy of the electrons and it gives us these peaks that are represented here. Uh, so the energy of the, the electron actually gives us access to the elements uh, they are linked to. What we can see is that uh, with the silent treaty, with uh, the fluorinated chain, we observe the presence of fluorine uh, on, the, on this very substrate that we don't have with the other, obviously. And also, we can measure the, the concentration of uh, the, the uh, elements, and we have we, we've seen an increase of con uh, carbon concentration with the carbon chain silent. Second, we see uh, we, we look at the contact angle method results. So the idea is to put a, a drop of water on the surface, and the affinity is defined by the, the contact angle here theta. Um, the more the contact angle. The, the more hydrophobic uh, behavior of the surface. And when we look, so here are the results uh, for different substrates. And we can see that uh, the use of silane uh, significant, significantly increased the hydrophobic uh, state of our surface. So our actually uh, uh, the, the silanization procedure worked. Let's look uh, finally at uh, what happened uh, when we test those silent treated uh, mixtures. So uh, mixtures are amastic. So with two-point bending, we tested stiff stiffness and also resistance to fatigue. 
with tension compression, we tested, we, we tested heavy behavior and also resistance fatigue. And uh, finally, we tested indirect tension, tension test uh, with uh, for mixture. And for matchstick, we, we tested uh, with SR, LD behavior, and also behavior during RRP, but I will not talk about it. Uh, I don't have uh, so much time. So let's look at uh, what happened for mixtures, the performance of mixtures. In gray, we have the reference mix. In the yellow, the control mix. Uh, orange is the anti-stripping silent mix. And blue is the pro-stripping silent mix. Let's focus on the resistance to fatigue and especially epsilon 6, which is really important. So just without silane, the silanation itself, the control mix, we have an improvement of, uh, of 11 micro, micro deformation. Um, if we add uh, the prostriping silane to this, this limits the improvement of the, the modification, the surface modification. And if we add an anti-stripping anti silane, it further improves this, uh, this improvement. Um, to the point where, where it's comparable to the poly polymer modification. Uh, the cylindration procedure slightly reduces the stiffness overall, overall, but not so much. And uh, both silent that are hydrophobic actually in increase resistance to moisture, even the prostriping silent. It's because the adhesion uh, in the air is really different from the adhesion in the water, uh, in the in case in presence of water. So um, we compare the results uh, of two-point bending and tension compression. Uh, so these are the polar param parameters uh, for both uh, device. And we can see that the effect of silence are really the same um, between both device. Um, we have the same slope, and uh, we have uh, uh, the same modification of epsilon 6 that we previously uh, saw. If we look at the LB behavior of mixture, Basically, we have the same mixture. It's not the surface modification is not changing, changing anything. Um, so all mixtures share, share the same, same shift factor and uh, twist to, and four twist to one D constant. The other that are actually uh, uh, changing is just to, probably due to repet repetability. So negligible effect on the LV behavior. And the conclusion is the same for the mastics. In conclusion to this last campaign. Um, a new silanization procedure to modify the surface properties uh, of was proposed. proposed. Um, we, we verified that the silanization uh, procedure actually worked with surface analysis technique, techniques. And uh, binder aggregate addition can noticeably improve the mixture performances up to a level comparable to the benefits of polymer modification. Now, uh, I, want to, I want to add that it's uh, obviously um, related to the, to the Materials I used, and uh, we should uh, we should go further to to check the, the capacity of uh, this uh, technique. Let's uh, let's uh, sum up my work and uh, draw some perspective. So, in, in summary, this work contributed to a better understanding of the thermochemical performances of big binders and mixtures. Uh, the thesis was divided in four campaigns. The role of bitumen uh, properties and aggregate nature on mixture performances was evaluated in campaign one. The behavior of bitumen and mastics was studied in campaign two. A new interface test, interface test on bitumen thin film was developed in campaign three. And finally, the role of binder aggregate adhesion on mixture performances was studied with an original aggregate surface modification approach in campaign four. The main findings were summarized at the end of each campaign. Now, in terms of perspective, um, I think that uh, more results are needed to confirm the link between the fatigue performances of bitumen and mixture which is a quite promising uh, uh, parameters, parameter. Um, first results from a newly developed uh, thin film test reveal good potentiality that needs to be used in depth, especially to obtain the motion ratio value for the bitumen. Um, we could explore the, the potentiality of the addition modification on, on other performances, and we can work towards an industrially, industrially feasible and consistent binder aggregate interface modification procedure. So I would like to thank you everyone for the, your attention and I hope you have a nice question. Okay, so thank you very much for this nice presentation. Uh, we start now with the question time. So I would start from the reviewers who have uh, read your thesis. So uh, perhaps from 
Professor Carter from Ecole de Technologie Supérieure de Montréal. Yes, thank you. Uh, well, um, I, I think you did good. So uh, I, 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 I read your thesis as you know. Uh, you can hear me well, right? Yes. Uh, so, so I, I read your thesis. It's, it's, it, you did a lot of tests, a lot of different tests. Uh, there's, there's very high quantity of results in there. Um, uh, so, so you can be proud of uh, the experimental work that you did. Thank um, you, but I, I was not at all. Uh, I, I, I did a lot also. Okay, okay. Uh, and, and by the way, it's not really clear what was done exactly by you and by FH. So that's something that should be clear on the part of So, so you did a good job. You did a lot of tests. Uh, however, it, 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 I think the analysis in many parts could be, you know, more in depth. There could be more detail. But since you have a, a lot of results and a lot of things to say and a lot of different things to show, uh, it, it seems to me that sometimes you try to go fast and the results just say, this is bigger than this, this works. Okay, there's a link, there's no link, and that's it. Uh, and, and it was a little bit the same in your presentation. You showed 70 slides in 44 minutes. Uh, if we blink, we miss a campaign. Uh, so, so, so there's a lot of information. So you need to learn to summarize, to synthesize what you do, okay? So this is the thing. Um, my, my, my main question, I have a few questions that I will start more general. Uh, what, what was the main problematic? Why did you do this thesis? So um, we started with um, we wanted to know if uh, the good performance. Um, so the, I think it started with the, the. We wanted to link basically the addition performances and the fatigue performance of, of mixture, and uh, that's where it started. So we had the intuition uh, that if we have a good addition between the binder and aggregate, we would uh, um, we would get. A good performance in, in, in fatigue, but uh, so this was the, the main main quest. Let's say. Uh, then, if you look at the complexity of the subject, uh, because when you when you look at the addition of uh, the binder aggregate addition, um, there is a lot of way to study it. You can study it uh, in the dry condition, in wet condition. So, for instance. If you want to relate ITSR with, uh, let's say, the polar parameters, uh, it could be accurate, but uh, really, like, it depends on, on, on the. On, I think it depends on the material. It depends on a lot of things. So what what we did is that um, we built uh, this force campaign where we wanted to modify the surface of uh, aggregates and to see if there were actual effects, and we we didn't want to, to modify anything else. So this was the main the core of the thesis. And then um, when you look at fatigue performances, you have to ask yourself, uh, what is fatigue? Uh, because when you look at continuous cyclic loading, um, it's not only damage. So uh, this is why we developed, uh, but before my, my thesis actually, we uh, developed the analysis I did with uh, reversible and irreversible phenomena. And this, this added up uh, to this. It's also a word that I did during my master, so it was in the continuation of this. Um, the, the, third, the third campaign with the addition, uh, with the symptom test, uh, it was completely designed during my thesis. Originally, um, we, didn't, we didn't plan to do it, but we thought it was a good idea to propose a new interface, interface test. Um, actually, I think it's a it's a it's a steady subject in itself. Um, I would have loved to to to, uh, to have more results, especially for pull off tests, because uh, I think uh, addition in the, the dry condition is really important, and this might this is not well studied. 
Um, so it was added, and uh, I, I couldn't go to the point where we tested uh, the pull off test with uh, um, silent treated cylinders, uh, which was the original ID of this, of this uh, test. But since they, there were so, so many things to, to say about the analytical approach, the simulation, and then the first test, uh, we just stopped there for, for, for this. I couldn't go further anyway. Uh, I had to finish. So uh, this is why, why, why it was all messy, because it, it, it adds up. But I think the, the subject of addition itself just opens so many, so many doors. So I just wanted to make a contribution to the subject, but not a definitive answer to anything. OK. OK, no, it's how good the campaign one? Oh, yes, campaign one. Oh, campaign one was, uh, so the campaign one was uh, to, we wanted to, to see the influence, uh, the correlation between the, 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 the performance of nature. So this is where we wanted to correlate, let's say, ITSR to the fatigue in a more, much more classic way. But uh, um, we needed more from a um, um, physical point of view. We, we needed more uh, data that uh, we obtained from the other campaign. Because I think I think if you take only campaign one, gives us a uh, lot of practical results. But uh, if you want a deeper analysis, you have to, to have the, the other campaigns. So this is take on that. It's, it, it, it's clearer, but uh, you see that I think that's what's missing basically. It's like kind of a, an explanation, an umbrella that takes everything under it so we can actually attach everything together. Because every single campaign is interesting. Uh, it, it's all very interesting stuff, uh, but it, sometimes it's difficult to attach all the pieces together. Okay? Um, I, I'll start by the, the campaign four. Uh, it's interesting, but I wonder what it's doing there. Why did you compare uh, two point bending and uh, tension compression test? It, it, it's very interesting, but um, I, I failed to see the link with everything else. Okay, so uh, I think we could we could have used only one device and. Uh, and draw conclusion from that, but we, we wanted confirmation. So, so for, let's say, for instance, it's not. Um, we, we just wanted confirmation, and uh, so we just double double check with another uh, device uh, the fatigue performances of, of nature. And uh, I'm sure if you obtain good results with the homogeneous test, such as uh, tension compression, it's good because the two point bending you could argue, which is not the it's not homogeneous, so uh, there might be some. Uh, uh, it's, it's tricky to analyze, I think. So we wanted we wanted just more uh, more data and confirmation for our uh, modifications because the surface modification part was really important and uh, I think was fundamental. Okay. Uh, could you go to to slide sixty three? Sixty three. That one. Dense, dense one. Yeah, that's perfect. Um, there you go. Uh, first question. You 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 showed that if you look at epsilon six, uh, you say that without silent there's eleven in the micro difference. Is there really? Because if we look at the error bar, to me, it's not statistically different. They, they seem to cross pretty well. So, so maybe I'm wrong because I don't have the numbers in front of me. But I, are those results really different? Well, um, if you look at the, 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 the so the, the error bars um, are calculated with uh, all the samples. So we use, um, I think it's, uh, 18 samples for each mixture, and uh, we do the regression, and then we calculate the confidence interval for the value of the regression parameters that are listed here. So um, I would say that it's comparable if you have a discrepancy of one uh, um, of one bar. I would, I would say so. We can we can say that there is an effect. Uh, because this confidence interval, I think it's 95%. Uh, 
So if, let's say we out we we have uh, 131 for the control mix, there would be uh, such a ridiculous uh, probability that uh, it's actually the same value when we compare to the reference mix because the confidence interval is already here for the reference mix, which is about five uh, micro depth. It's already 95%. Uh, so I can conclude with, uh, uh, I think with a high probability that it's, it, it has an effect, it's measurable. Okay. But then we could argue, we could, we could, we could start to argue when, uh, let, let's say we compare the control mix to the pro trimming side of this. This is, this is uh, we, we are at the edge uh, of, the, of the, this, this confidence interval. But uh, otherwise, I'm sure that the control mix, the signalization procedure, did change the performance of, of uh, fatigue. The anti stripping silent did further improve this uh, performance. This is quite, quite, yeah, I, I, I mean, I'm pretty sure. You're confident. That, yes. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Uh, it, it, it's, so, so, but that's very clear, okay? okay. Uh, but, but it needs to be clear in the document also. But then you say, if you go to slide 66, which you slide after that. Yes. 56 or 66? 66. 66, okay. okay. Uh, you show that for the, uh, the complex modulus, basically the fact that you have treated or non-treated aggregate, you have almost a very negligible effect, right? Uh, and, and so can you, because the goal at first you mentioned that you want to look at the lesion between, you know, bitumen or mastic with aggregates. Um, and here you did change the surface, you did the surface treatment on your aggregate, so you did change the adhesion between those two. You showed, you know, with contact angle and everything, that it, it is different, right? Yes. Uh, so for complex modulus, should I understand that basically adhesion is not important? Uh, I think yes. I think it's not, it's not, uh... Well, I think it's not important. Important yet. I think it's it's only about the so for this this plastic is a is a maybe a little bit uh, tricky to talk about because there is there is only forty percent uh, forty uh, percent of glass beads in volume. So basically, you have uh, glass beads just floating around. Um, I think it's, it's just rigidify uh, it, it just rigidify the whole material, but. Uh, uh, that's all. We, we just test a, a, a stiffer bitumen. But if we look, if we look at mixture with where there is much more aggregate, we have the same results. And uh, I would say that the this aggregate skeleton just work uh, as a rigidifier. It just fills the voids between between the um, between the, the bitumen parts. So um, I don't see why addition should should, uh, should have an, has an effect on that. If so nothing breaks. If nothing nothing breaks. I don't see why addition should, uh, should have an effect. Okay, so the type of aggregate, if I have the same, as you said, rigidity or something, they're not brittle, they do not break with you, whatever work with the specimen, whatever the type of aggregate, whatever the surface charge of the aggregate, I should get the same modulus. Well, if you can have the exact uh, same skeleton. Yeah, of course, of course, of course. It seems good. But usually, it's, it's it's impossible to do when you take two different aggregate types. You cannot reproduce, reproduce the same exact uh, skeleton. Well, we can. It it would be a lot of work, but I mean, I mean, exactly, because here it was it, it was all the, the the whole approach it was to set the very same uh, aggregate skeleton. So we had we had when we modify the surface of aggregate. We take the different, uh, uh, so the different uh, parts of the aggregates, the bigger, the smallest, the fine, the, the, the filler, and we modify everything without changing the grading curve of, of each constituent uh, part, and then we uh, recreate it with the very same uh, grading curve with the same geometry and everything. So this was the approach, and we did everything. Uh, we, did, we did that, and the only factor that that uh, actually changed were were the, the modeling. So 
with that, in addition to the fact that we actually ensure that the, the civilization was good, uh, I think we can, can conclude that the addition is not playing any role, uh, at least in LV behavior here. Okay. I'm a bit surprised, but that's your result, so. Uh, it's, a very, it's a very uh, surprising and interesting result. I, I think it's okay. The problem is that we could not check on the same team that effectively the simulation process works well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah, last question, please, slide 41. So here you say that the, you explained really well, and, and I think it makes more sense. Uh, but then you see there's, there's the, the fourth part is uh, healing. Yes. Okay. Uh, makes sense. It seems we go from a lower to a higher one, so there must be some kind of healing. With, with constant, uh, then, with constant pain anyway. Actually. Yeah, and, and then you go to the next slide. Uh, and, and, and you said somewhere, you wrote it or you said it, I don't know. Um, there you go, okay? That even if the modulus came back, so even if it healed, it's more prone to fatigue. So if it's healed, it's healed. Okay, so uh, I think, yeah, so that's, that's a debate about the definition of healing, right? Um, it is. <laughs> yes, no, no, definitely. So I want, yeah, I, I want to make it clear. So um, I think I want to separate so we have, we have healing uh, in the sense that I think when we look at the results and we see that the, so the temperature is constant, the phase angle is constant, and we are slow, slowly uh, recovering the modulus. Um, from a physical point of view, it could be totally associated with the, the fact that micro cracks, micro cracks actually are slowly healing. Okay, but th that's where uh, I said. But I did not say that um, we came back to the original microstructure, it, you could have, let's say, you could have flows after the first rest. You can still have residual flows that are, let, let's say, weak bounds that are ready to break. And actually, I think this, this is what happens during the second loading. This is why they have different rate of damage. I think that you obtain stiffness, so you, you, you can have uh, bonds, weak bonds, that give the same stiffness in low, uh, at low amplitude, but Whenever you increase the amplitude, those are the, the, the first bound, bound to break. And uh, so it's like stitches on the, on the wood, you know. Uh, you have stitches, so let's say you have the same elasticity of the, of the, of your, um, I don't know, uh, you, 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 you recover your elasticity with the, with the stitches, but they are, they, they are the first to, to break. And uh, you reopen the wound, the wound. So this is the analogy I would use for that. So it's not totally healed. So it's not you don't have the, the original material. It's just partially healed, uh, and, to, and the model is yeah, it's totally recovered, which is which is two, two different things. Maybe yeah. it was not clear. No, no, it's it's good. I just wanted you to hear your definition to see what it was. So uh, thank you. That's it for me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so thank you, Professor Carter, for this discussion. And uh, we pass to the second reviewer. So, Professor Nasser from Texas A&M University at Qatar. Thank you. And thanks, Gabriel, for uh, the presentation. Um, so I'll, I'll, give, I'll start by two general comments, and then we'll go to specific uh, questions. So the two general comments, and uh, I would like to hear also your views on it, if you have an addition. I, I second what uh, Professor Carter said. You've done a lot of uh, really excellent experimental work. What, in order to strengthen the dissertation, I strongly recommend that you spend time very early on 
in writing your dissertation, linking the chapters together. I think till the chapter four, the campaign four, when you went to the adhesion, I felt that the link with the previous chapters uh, did not seem easy to link the chapters together after that point, from that point on. So in the, um, I know what you're trying to do, but actually today you make it even clearer, which is learning how to relate the binder to the mixed properties under different conditions, whether it's fatigue, whether it's linear viscoelastic, whether it's adhesion. So make it clear, spend more time early on, make it what your tight, the whole link, all the chapters together. It's, it's, I think it's a matter of presentation and writing, that's all. Nothing technical in that. The second comment is maybe also again related to writing. Avoid generalization of conclusions. Quite often in the thesis, you mention that the binder content did not have effect on fatigue. I mean, we know um, as a fact, I think that it does. So within the parameters of your experiments, within the, the conditions of your experiment, maybe it was not sensitive your experiment to that factor. So uh, there are locations, I'm giving general first and then I'll go specific. Okay, okay. Yeah, and then there is another place Met several places where you say uh, polymer modified uh, polymer modification was or was not an important factor in certain results. It, it, it all depends on what polymer modifier you used. I, I don't know, I think, I guess you used SPS, maybe? Yes. Well, yeah. But there are other modifiers. Any comment on these two before I proceed to the technical side? Yes, maybe on the binder, effect of binder content. So, uh, First of all, I, I didn't say that uh, it has no effect. It, it has limited effect within my parametric study. This is a small correction. So because it was actually, it has more, more effect than the cross effect between those per, the other parameters, let's say, cross target. Good. And, uh, Good. and the effect, if we look at the figures, the, the effect is actually when you switch from uh, 4.8 to 5.8, just an increase of 1% percent by no content. The increase of uh, FCN6 is, is uh, significant. It's, it's 10 microdef. So it, it's, it's not at all uh, non, -neg non negligible. I didn't want, I didn't want to, to, uh, to be understood like this. Um, good. Yeah, this is a good This is a only remark. Yeah, you, you did actually say that it is a small effect or. Because, I, yeah, because the idea of the. Um, I just wanted to show that with the. Factorial plan, you can you can measure the cross effects and uh, you can measure the direct effects, and uh, it can you just can uh, draw hierarchies of parameters. And I, I didn't want to say there is no effect, but it was uh, really not the biggest within my campaign. Obviously, if you change, I, I, I totally agree with you. If you change the material and the prop, the percentage of uh, modifier, you would probably obtain different uh, different results. Great, thank you. Now, I want to ask you, this is a dilemma always when we do experimental plan in the lab. You mentioned, I believe, that uh, you changed the binder type, keeping all other factors the same. Am I Gabriel? That's how you did it? Yes. Yeah. For, for the, so, the, the part where we studied the influence of vitamin, especially? Yes. Yes. Yeah. You know, actually, to me, it's a dilemma how do you control an experiment in the lab? Because some people argue that that's not how you control it. Because you just answered, actually, Dr. Carter, when you change anything, even the binder type, others will change. So I would say, why keep other things constant if I'm going to change the volumetrics, like the void in mineral aggregate or BFA? What is a better way to control the experiment? Is it by changing one parameter at a time, keeping other constants? Because you would violate the design. Like in the US, when we do the design, we have volumetrics to, to achieve, like BMA, BFA, M. So, so if I change only the aggregate, actually, that was clear you understand it, because when you answer Dr. Carter, you said it's, an, it's very difficult to, to, to hold the skeleton exactly the same. So why 
why keep other factors together? How would you do that design? Would you change one parameter keeping other constant? Or would you adjust others in order to achieve volumetric parameters? What, what's a better approach? Um, I think it's the, the you, you cannot you cannot draw conclusions if you don't don't do a parametric approach. I mean, if you just change everything, what where what what is your starting point to say this is this factor really important? This factor is really important. Um, so I think you have to like whenever you study any variable in any in any field, you have to to make most the, the most thing constant the. The thing, the most constant, uh, uh, everything you can keep constant, it, you should you should keep it constant to study a specific uh, aspect. And uh, I couldn't control everything. So, uh, for instance, when 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 we look at this, like I said, aggregate type, um, we just use different type, but we could have determined so many parameters for the aggregates. Uh, so I know that, that there are some hidden variables in, in this. But the idea behind that is to stress the more the more variables you can. So for instance, with, with those those uh, those mix, we made sure that the void content was not a potential bias. That's why I talk about uh, talk about this in my thesis. So I think the, the best approach is to fix the, the more the yeah the most thing you can, and then to see what what's actually doing something. To make sure, but this is why we study cross effect because we see that you cannot just say, okay, uh, there is a uh, let's say x percent uh, of uh, the fatigue is due to this this parameter. It's uh, it's all it's it's all crossed. So I think this is the right approach, but this is obviously the most time-consuming uh, and expensive approach. So we cannot do it uh, like every time. That's why we did it. Uh, we did. It we did a really extensive work to, to pull some some generalities, but yeah, um, I think I don't see the, the, the another approach than this draw conclusions that are actually uh, reasonable. Reasonable. Uh, yeah. This is close by. I don't know if can my you answer is. Sorry. Can you can hear because lost. I, I couldn't hear you for a second. Oh, just for a second. Now, so I, now I hear you again. Okay. So, so I'll, I'll sorry, I, I maybe interrupted you because I, I lost the sound. No, I was finished. Well, I think this is the right approach, but this is my thing. I, I think I think we are saying the same thing. I I, uh, I think blindly changing one parameter, which you did not do that, no. hoping that everything else will be okay, is uh, is not the right way. The way I I I uh, do it is to change the parameter like you did but allow variation in the other parameters such that the volumetrics are not uh, affected considerably. What's considerably? I suggest to, for example, we do 0.5%, we don't want the VMA to change by 0.5%. So it's really balancing act, you know? So you try to balance what you change, but I, I rarely I can change one source, one input and keep everything else constant. So, what, I, so what you would say that you, you would check uh, in order to see if you don't have bias from uh, from volumetric uh, properties, let's say. To extent possible, yeah. I try to keep it at least. Here's what I try to keep it within the design criteria valid. The design is valid, which I think you did that. You check that your design did not become. I don't know the French spec, for example. In the US, we say minimum VMA 13%. So I try to keep it that way. I agree with what you did. I'm just saying. In other materials, if I change aggregate source, it's impossible to control everything else. If I'm trying to check, let's say I want to check the effect of a granite versus limestone. I cannot just replace a granite with limestone, same mass, same, uh, same mass, and hope that uh, this is a good experiment. It will, it will not be a good experiment. Okay, so that's why that's why we, we had a unique uh, a common grading curve for all the, the, the aggregate points. We we, we designed so. <laughs> With the different parts of the aggregates, like bigger parts and parts, we recreated, or with the help of Epash, we recreated uh, the gradient curve. Like it was unique. I can show you the gradient curve if you want. And yeah. because because we had an idea of what actually matters and what doesn't matter. And so we'll have, the big the big part was, Sorry. 
you must have that idea. I think that's even keeping the gradation, I, I'm not giving you an answer. It's really a balance act. You have to minimize the effect of changing one variable on the volumetrics and still meet your design criteria. I think that this is what uh, what we did, what we tried okay. to, to do at least. Okay, let's go to the more uh, interesting part. Uh, I, I think that uh, let's maybe I, I can add something. Uh, it's just because uh, the U.S. and the French approaches are I, quite quite different. That's why we you have to go closer. You have to go closer. Okay. Just one one. He's coming to the to the presentation. Just one remark, it's, uh, it's just because the, the, the US and the French approaches are, are quite different for the mixed design. Um, in the French approach, we, we just keep the, the gradation, as uh, Gabriel said, and, uh, and the, the binary contents uh, equal. And we consider that the volume metrics are more or less the same. So we, we have a small correction that we can do with the density of the aggregates. But in this case, we, we, we don't do well. We, we make the hypothesis that uh, they would not have a, a big impact on the, on the results. So uh, that's why we, we, we did this choice. So maybe it's, uh, we, we, we can justify this like, like that. It's, it's the French methodology for the mixed design. Thanks, thanks. Uh, uh, if, I say, if I may say something. Yes. In fact, uh, yeah, you want to study the influence of there is different different uh, way to study influence. You remain in the frame that, that you want to have a, a, a good design material. You want a good design material, and when you change something, small binder, for example, you check what's that. This is not the idea that we that we postulate. We want to see for a given design, which is a thin pipe, what is the effect of changing this, and if one parameter that has been identified physically, first you check which parameter you want. And this means that when you have a, 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 a mixture that is not very well designed, you know which parameter to change to obtain the good design. Nice. Okay. okay. Yeah, the approach is different. Yeah, yeah, the goal is different. You already say this is the optimum. Now I'm going to shift see if it remains at optimum or I'm getting it. I see. Yeah. Okay, so I, I really like the work you did on uh, how to adjust the results to account for the effect of temperature and nonlinearity. I, I, I like that because if we don't do that, then the initial drop of modulus can be interpreted as damage or whatever or nonlinear. And you, you're saying, no, it's just the temperature went down by three to four degrees. Is that a valid? That's how you did it, yeah? Yes, yes. Yeah. I, th I okay. think it's totally valid because we measure really precisely the increase of temperature. Yeah. And yeah. the change of modulus is quite linear in this region because it, the change of temperature is not too high. So with right. a good model or even with just good result, experimental result in the, the, this region, we can definitely conclude that the temperature is really important. It's, it's not the only, the only effect. Uh, there, there is also tissue because if you correct this, Let's look at this correction. So nonlinearity, uh, I will just do it. Yeah. Sorry, just wait a second. Let me show you everything. So um, the effect of nonlinearity, as, as we, we see, is not, not so much. So it's not, not relevant. But if we look at those two pictures, let's say the, the, the first holding cycle is in blue, uh, when we correct the effect of temperature, um, you can see that it's quite important in terms of modulus. It's, it's like, it's two thirds of the of the change of modulus, about two thirds, just due to temperature change, and the, the temperature measurement is, is really quick. It's, it's uh, really uh, consistent with uh, four thermocouples uh, that all indicate the same thing. So it's really not something we can just uh, uh, sweep sweep away. I don't, I don't know how to say that, but uh, we, we have to, we have to cope with that, and I think it's it's really. Important to take it take it in account in analysis. Is it possible experimentally to have a, a closed loop and then adjust the temperature of the bath 
such that the binder temperature is controlled or it's, it's not possible? I mean, I, I don't know. No, uh, we, we've thought about, I think, I, I think I've been thinking about that uh, from the, the beginning of the beginning of my physics. Uh, I would love to, to design the tension current, but I, I don't see the, the simple way to do it. Because you cannot just, there is, um, so you have energy dissipation, which uh, transforms into heat. And uh, in order to maintain, uh, um, maintain the temperature, which, which rapidly increases, as, as we've seen, mm -hmm. uh, it rapidly increases at the beginning of the, uh, where, where, so just wait for the temperature. Yeah, and it was three and a half degrees within a very cool. Yeah, time. yeah, 100 seconds, you get, you get, you get uh, one and a half degree. So mm -hmm. in order to maintain the temperature, you would have to have um, uh, an incredibly fast uh, uh, temperature equilibrium with a, uh, a huge, um, how, how, um, Close, uh, close uh, feeding, feedback, you have to control. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it would be like uh, uh, cooling tubes uh, in the sample. I don't know, something like that. Like something really uh, uh, with lots of heat transfer, heat transfer. Okay. So well, it's, it's not, it's really not simple. We, I don't see how to, how to make it simple. If we want to, to keep, to keep the, uh, can and, uh, create a company who sells better DSR with uh, better control of temperature. Is yeah. business. Yeah. If I may, if I may say something, because uh, this is a very, very key point, and I'm fighting since years about that. You, you know, I, yeah. yeah. But this this proves that when you fit the damage law on the global curve, it's not not good. absolutely. And Second, then. there is a very simple example that that show you that it's impossible to maintain temperature. Because the, this dissipation energy is in volume. It's like you put, you, it's the same as if you put, uh, 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 I don't know, food in a microwave. It's eaten from inside and you refresh from outside. So you cannot, except if you have a very infinitely small uh, volume. In that case, maybe you can. Otherwise, it's, there is a time for the temperature to diffuse with. Yeah, this is a good approach. Once you know how much, you can go back uh, post processing and uh, adjust it. You're muted, Herbert. <laughs> yes, the only way is to make a correction. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah, you, can you, can, you can limit, you can limit the, the temperature increase. Let's say, if we compare, let's say, the temperature increase in the ASR and the DSR, it's really not the same. Uh, and we've seen the drop of modules due to temperature, probably due to temperature. At the beginning of DSR is smaller compared to the same with the same amplitude as the DSR. So, as Ellie said, it's it's only a matter of uh, balance between the volumetric properties and the surface properties of heat exchange. So, you could design maybe you could design uh, some test where this effect is really limited compared to what we obtain here with ASR. But it has, it, there is a lot of constraint with that coming with that. Okay, this is a question I have is the one, so that's the one that uh, confused me is the discussion on steric hardening. Yes. Because I'll, I'll tell you, I'm gonna combine it into, how much time I have? Two minutes, three minutes, survey Because I don't wanna take all, how much time? Uh, press we have time, we have time, we have time. Okay. Angela, stop me if I'm taking uh, all long, please. I don't think there is, uh it constraint for questions, but it's like uh, it is it is. so so now that the question I have is about aesthetic hardening. Why does why do you attribute the increase in the G star to steric I'll tell you why because I did this experiments myself. Actually I went to the lab because it confused me 10 15 years ago. And we kept, and the increase in the G star is not trivial. I'm not trivial, not in terms of amount, in terms of time it takes. It could be 50% of the first part, the modules keeps going up. Look at the data. It's not trivial, the time, the cycles. So I, I'm going to give you a counter, uh, the, the counter explanation and see what you think. If the material is nonlinear behavior, there's coupling between the shear and the normal strains. And I can measure not normal stress, normal stresses. 
So there is normal stress generated on the upper plate, which it's a proven, you can get it from your DSR. It gives you normal stress. And they are not usually trivial. They are not huge, doctoral trivial. And while calculating G star, ignore it. This G star is simply shear stress over shear strain linearized. And there is a, there is a normal stress that we are ignoring that provides confinement to the specimen. So why do you interpret this as steric hardening? I would say it could be that normal stress is providing pressure on it and the material will respond by increasing work. Okay, so this is this is this could be a good explanation, but actually we did test that uh, proves it, it's not uh, it's not possible. So um, so let's, let's sure. look at so let's look at this curve. So what you say is that. Uh, when you have when, when you when you apply continuous loading uh, in shear, which care? Are you sharing the same care? The one on slide the twenty three. So, or some, so, oh, sorry, sorry. I think you're sharing something. Yeah, else. I, I I share my my screen. Sorry. I share to your screen. Do you see? Do yeah. you see? Do you see the, the new yeah. pictures? So yeah. this this care is, is not in my presentation because I didn't have, have time for that. But um, basically, what you say is, um, if you apply shear strain um, during, let's say, continuous loading, um, the so you, you have a normal stress that appears and uh, that uh, produces confinement that sh that eventually change the, the, the modulus in shear, right? Yeah. So um, what we did is yeah. So when you saw when you calculate G star. You're not the coupling, that's what I mean. Go ahead, please. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, so what we did is that we, we just put our sample at rest. Um, so during so th these are the curves we obtain when uh, we just we just put the, the sample at rest without any shear, without nothing. And then from time to time, it's a few cycles every two minutes, we take a measurement point. So there is not this shear that is changing the microstructure or anything, or the, the confinement system. And we just apply a, a, a little shear test, and we look at the modulus change with the rest time. So the, 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 the sample is just, just resting here, doing nothing. And we observe this increase of modulus, and the increase of modulus is about the same for all the binders. Uh, it's here in person, it is, let's say 12 percent. And uh, so this has nothing to do with uh, the, the, the shear strain we, uh, we apply because it's always the same for all the points. It's always the same number of cycles, it's always the same, the same amplitude, and it's low amplitude, it's at the, the, the amplitude. So um, there is no way, if, if it were the, the axial strain that, that produces confinement, um, we would have the same points for uh, the, the same modules for all these points, yeah, and it's not happening. This one is actually a clever way to show it, but this one, I believe that this is correct. This is this makes sense, complete sense, because the specimen is sitting undisturbed, so there is still hardening. What I'm saying there, if you keep loading the specimen, why there is still hardening? You keep breaking these physical bonds that happen, which is still hardening. You know what I mean? So because you keep, you keep so you, you make the hypothesis that that my little measure low amplitude measurements are uh, a threat to the microstructure uh, um, of the bitumen, of the right? Yeah, in, in that experiment, what I'm saying, what I'm saying, I can say, I'm, 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 it's not maybe 100%, but what I'm saying, there, the specimen is not sitting to develop steric hardening. You keep disturbing these steric hardening effects. So I thought, really, when I read it in your thesis, you say because we are loading it, there is steric hardening. To me, when you stop loading it, there will be steric hardening. It's the other way. No, it's, it's I mean, um, why would the steric hardening happen because you are loading I think, it? I think it's independent. Uh, you could have, you could have both, both effects. Let's say you, you, could, uh, you could have, uh, I mean, it's that, it's, it, the, the, the both effects would happen. You, you can test the, the, the let's say you test the, the LV properties, the compact modulus. At low amplitude, and you can have uh, steric hardening during uh, during this test, and actually this this is what we saw. I, 
I don't see why it should interrupt the, this phenomena unless you have large amplitude that destroys everything. It could be in competition. It, it's not mandatory that the, the recording is stopped by the, 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 the strain okay. loading. Let's settle to on this, I think, because I'll move to another question. Even if steric hardening happening, which is okay, fine, because you're saying it's more strain, that does not exclude that there could be an additional effect because of the normal stress that we simply are not accounting for. Because when you calculate G star, you take shear over shear, but there is, there is a matrix should be solved that involves normal stresses. Which is not here. There is coupling. Yes. I mean, there is coupling. You shear it, and there will be normal stress in this material, especially for the polymer modified, by the way. But you, you, you showed me good exemplification of, of why you'd say, look at that language in the thesis. See if I uh, revisit it, please. See if my under, it sounded to me like you explained the steric hardening by loading, but you're saying they're independent. I like the way independent. I like yeah, that. Yeah, it's, it's really independent. So, what? I mean, I mean, your argument is 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 a uh, is uh, acceptable. Um, I'm not sure, like like during the fatigue test, I'm not sure that th th there are not a visible effect of uh, the normal stress apparition. But uh, in independent to that, we did we did this test that proves that there is this phenomena which accounts for this percent of the initial modulus, and uh, we believe that uh, it happens. Uh, during the, the, the fatigue at low amplitude, but it, it's not definitive. I, I, I agree with that. Gabriel, yeah, can you go to the slide? You go ahead. No, this is this is this is uh, this is really a lot of the great questions and uh, phrases. I think we have time. Okay, I have, I have one more question. I have one more question. Go to the slide in which in your slide switch to your presentation. In which you showed the uh, ratio, I think Dr. Carter asked about the same thing. Uh, e a modulus in the adhesion test versus G star. It was like a 10,000 ratio. Or? Oh, yes, 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 yes. Yes, yeah. So, experimental results um, with simple test against uh, the shear test. Yeah, what, what, what's, your, what's the ratio? What was it? Oh yeah, ten thousand. Uh, so it's uh, so I, I, I let's take the oh, blue points. It's the blue points and the ratio between the odometric, bit, uh, the apparent modulus of the film, which is probably uh, the odometric modulus of the bitumen, is uh, so the ratio is uh, yeah, it's a lot. What 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 is the, what is this ratio? Where the what is the uh, explanation? For this ratio, what, what, where do what are the parameters that add up to this ratio? I think I think it's just on the right. It's the the quotient ratio. Our vitamin is really incompressible. It's it's close to to being totally incompressible, which is why when you apply when you are in pedometric comp, uh, a condition, it's really really stiff. May, may I explain because uh, maybe uh, in fact due to the fact that the rock uh, is very stiff. Comparing to the bitumen. So the rock cannot deform. It means that the, that the, the bitumen film cannot deform laterally. And as it is incompressible, the, the stiffness is becoming infinity. Absolutely. In a dye solution, right. in a dye elasticity solution for thin films. Yes, yes, that's an elasticity solution. So it means, it means that. You can have a modulus between two, uh, the bitumen between two aggregates. The one that you obtain is not the young modulus or the shear modulus. It yeah, yeah, that's what. Much higher one. Right. It yeah, that's of, what... of, of ten thousand. This is why. Is why. This is why the, the bitumen is becoming steeper than rock. Exactly. Yeah. That could, that could, it, it, that the solution is available analytically if you are compared yes. to is the Nadai solution. The Nadai solution for. Compressible. Yeah. When it becomes incompressible, the ratio becomes a huge. In and I, I think. But in so. fact, practically, the, the rock stands maybe to deform a little bit. It's not. But this way to obtain the the, the quotient ratio, which is here. Um, just wanted to add. This is quite new. Yeah. 
So um, for, for the, the blue points, um, I look at the, 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 the stress and strain amplitude, and the rock could not uh, deform at all. It, it was too low. The bitumen, the, the bitumen was, was uh, not stiff, stiff enough, and even the odometric modulus of the bitumen was far from, from the actual modulus of the, the rock. So the rock could be considered as rigid, rigid, and uh, we have a, a, the odometric modulus of the thing, which is uh, obtained by, by this uh, apparent modulus here. So it's, uh, yeah, we, we, we have access with that. We have access to, to incredibly stiff uh, uh, modulus and near incompressibility, inc inc yes. So the, the figures for the, for the, for the portion ratio are actually, uh, this is, I think they are, um, they are good. This, uh, the, the, the value are right. Yeah, I mean, it's incompressible in this situation. So it gets, uh, it could become, uh, the modulus becomes like infinity. It is infinity. One yeah, divided yeah. minus two. Yeah, but the most, the, the most important point is the, the precision. You, you cannot obtain this kind of precision with the four significant figures with a uh, or anything else. Or, I mean, not anything else, but. So this, this, this was the, the, the novel piece. Me what you mean just to see by what is nonlinearity for for bitumen? What when we say nonlinear behavior, what does nonlinearity mean? So, um, um, so when when we um, so what we define uh, as nonlinear linearity is actually the effect of the change of uh, amplitude and strain uh, here in my case, uh on the observed modules. So. When you apply um, sinusoidal loading and you change the amplitude, uh, you take your stress strain uh, signal and uh, you, make, you make a classical analysis with a sinusoidal uh, uh, signal. Um, you can do it even if the signals of the stress uh, are not perfect. So you, let's say you, you apply a perfect sinus of strain, but the result is a little bit uh, different from uh, a sinus because of this nonlinearity effect, and uh, but you can still do the analysis and consider it as uh, an ellipse in the in the stress strain plane, uh, and you can you can still calculate a modulus. This is why I, I differentiate the complex modulus, which is obtained in, uh, at low amplitude, and the equivalent modulus, which is here is the measured modulus. Uh, I think in my presentation. So um, and by observing the differences between uh, these moduli uh, at low amplitude and higher amplitude, uh, we can we, we can actually uh, account for the effect of nonlinearity. But um, uh, is, it, is it okay for the explanation? Yeah, I mean, I wanted to hear it from you. Of course, there are two things that happen, but you described this one, which is the proportional proportionality of the response, and the other one is the superposition. And if you want to check the nonlinearity, also if you check. The normal stress I told you about, if it is nonlinear, the material will ge may generate that uh, normal stress. So if you have the data, go back and look at it, just for your own sake, for the future. I, I, think, are, I think I don't have the normal stress on this, this test. You do? I don't have, I don't have the, the no, data. Not this one, the DSR. Yes, on the DSR, I don't have the data. Okay. Gabriel, this was my last question. Uh, I really enjoyed reading your pieces. I, I really like that you have a lot of excellent, useful information. Tighten it well together, the pieces, and it uh, it it will help with the community. It's uh, good results, really good, good work. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so thank you, Yas, for this very nice and comprehensive discussion. So uh, this point, uh, I guess, yeah. I will. I will give the uh, speech to uh, Dr. Pouget. I know that you work together, but maybe you also have some remark or speech question. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation.
uh, okay. I think, the mic works. I think it works. No? Yeah. So congratulations for your work, for the report, for the presentation. It was very dense, but it was great. So congratulations for that. Um, I remember the day you, you asked us to, to order 100 liters of pure alcohol. And we were asking at that time, will he really use it for his PhD? And uh, it, looks like, it looks like it's, it's really the case. So congratulations to, to, to have set up such a, a complex uh, procedure in the, in the lab for modifying the, the interface between the aggregates and, and the bitumen. So uh, it's, it's, a, it's a great job. Yeah. I, have, I have kept the, the higher quality alcohol for, for just after. Okay, okay. okay. good. Good to know. Um, so of, of course, I, I will uh, I will have some questions. It's, it, it, it will be more uh, from the industrial point of view than from the scientific point of view. So it will change a little bit from the, from the previous uh, the comments. So the, the first one is the comments on your slide four. I don't know if you can go back to this. Um, so when you, 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 you write bituminous, bituminous mixture usage, 36,000 tons per year, it's, I think it's like between E0 and E00. There is a factor 1,000 between, but the reality is more 36 million tons per year in France. Okay, my bad for that. <laughs> it's, it's, it's too, uh, yeah. I cannot handle two uh, two big two uh, two big figures. So uh, okay. it, it, it because thirty six thousand yes, yes. is quite quite small. Indeed, yes, yes. Right. It's just just a remark. Big issue. Um, my, my my second uh, remark is more a question. So you say that th th there is a good link between uh, gamma six and epsilon six. So the gamma six uh, is the, the fatigue resistance for the bitumen. And epsilon six is the red fatigue resistance for the mixture. So, for one nature of aggregates, you say that there is a good correlation between these two parameters. Um, a, a, a fair correlation, no? Yes, but it was not only for one type of aggregate. I just it was a general conclusion on, on the five different type of aggregates. So, so, so I think you, you you didn't use this. Uh, you don't use this. Uh, Figure in in the presentation, but in your uh, reports, it's also it, it's a, yes, it's in your presentation. It's a a, fi, a figure for a fifteen. So I think it's uh, I it is. yes, or I think in your presentation you you have it. Is the same? Yes, in in slide twenty two maybe. Uh, so. For each nature of aggregates, you have a good correlation for be, between the gamma six and epsilon six. But as soon as you take into account the, the, the different nature of aggregates, you you obtain correlations that are not so good. So you, you have uh, the, the figure for uh, eighteen in your in your reports. So maybe you, you can we can have a look on this. And you said that you you have a fair correlation between the experimental epsilon six and the predicted uh, epsilon six when you when uh, taking into account the ETSR uh, the, the, the PMB modification and the, and the modulus, uh, I would say that it's a not so good correlation because you you have differences that are of the order of magnitude of the influence of each parameter. So uh, I think it's we we, we it's not a usable uh, correlation for uh, in the, in the, an industry like uh, or industrial company like, like EFAG. So um, uh, can you, uh, I, I, I would be interested to, to have your opinion on this. Um, why, why do we have this, this kind of results? It's, it is because there is, um, so of course, the, is there any impact of the interface quality between the bitumen and the aggregate? Um, and it is because we don't take it into account uh, properly, uh, 
or it's because there is no impact? Do, do, do you have uh, an explanation maybe to, to give? So um, for the, uh, the, the jury never, so this is uh, not a figure uh, that- Let me call, let me call. You now you did, uh, yeah, now it's good. It's, it's good now? Yeah. Okay, so this figure that you're talking about, Simon, uh, is not presented in my work. So um, basically I, I just made the predictive uh, equation for the fatigue performances uh, based on sorry. okay I've, I've lost the case. I've, I've just made a predictive equation on the mixture performances based on the other riddle so uh, I think it was included that uh, uh, I, I included the, the, the modulus and the ITSR so the, the idea was uh, can we per, can we predict uh, the, the mixture performances without doing the, the the experiment because this is the last experiment you do when you do a study uh, in the, according to the French standard standards. Um, I would say that in terms of, uh, um, yeah, in terms of correlation, it's, uh, it's really not, not good. Um, I won't argue with that. And uh, I'm sure th this is obvious that there is uh, the effect of uh, interface between the different aggregates and uh, the bits for a given vitamin. Uh, it's sure because we have observed it in my course campaign, and the minimum uh, we we know that uh, discrepancy you can obtain in at least uh, twenty microdeaths on this uh, SN six value. So if you change the aggregate, you change the addition properties, and obviously you could you could, uh, you change the, the, the performance overall due to to, to the uh, this different interface of different addition. Um, so if we look closer to this, uh, this regression, uh, we can see that the, the actual uh, discrepancy between the prediction and the result is also uh, 20, 20 microdeaths. So um, this is definitely, definitely uh, something that uh, um, if you have huge discrepancy between two mixtures, you can actually use maybe use this uh, this curve, but I wouldn't use it to predict uh, anything which is finer than uh, than 20, 20 uh, micro depth on epsilon six. That's so it's not usable for. I think I think unfortunately it's not usable uh, when you change too much parameters. But if you if you uh, if you take the same aggregate, maybe you can use it. If you, if you, I mean, if you keep the same aggregate, let's say, say you, you, work, you work with a CO aggregate, the for many, maybe you can, uh, you can, can definitely use this, uh, this result, I think. And how, how can we improve this? Uh, do, do we have to take into account another parameter? I don't know, maybe the, 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 one we, the ones we use for, for the, the predictive uh, equation is not, are, are not the, the, the right ones. Um, do, do you have some, maybe, uh, yeah, can you give some ideas on this? Or, or is there is there other parameters? Maybe we have to take more than only the interface for uh, interface uh, behavior into account. Maybe do we have to take other things? If you have some ideas, um, can you hear me? No, we unmuted. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, yes. So, so this, I, I think this, this could be greatly, well, I don't know greatly, but this could be improved definitely because um, I didn't have time to use the, 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 the data results of the fatigue of vitamin to include uh, this in this equation. But this is something, this is, this is for starters, this is something you could include because as, as we've seen, there is a good relationship. So I would include this. This wouldn't solve, uh, well, you would have to, if it works, you would have to perform fatigue test on vitamin in order to predict the result of mixture. So I don't know if it solves the problem of uh, time consuming test, but, may, but maybe it, it, could, it could help. I'm sure that we can have better uh, parameters for this uh, predictive equation. It was just, uh, it was just a trial uh, to see if we, can see if we can see anything, but I think there is definitely more uh, uh, accurate uh, parameters 
and one of them would be just the fatigue performance of insulin, which we, which we discussed uh, in this presentation. Okay, so it would be interesting to to, to try to, to, to add the, 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 the fatigue performance of the bitumen on, in this correlation. With, uh, maybe we, we, can, we can have maybe much more interesting results. And, uh, and, and regarding the time cons consumption of fatigue tests, uh, I think we can use also the last test for the fatigue uh, on bitumen. Do you have any, uh, I don't know, what, what are your thoughts about this test? I think that uh, you could correlate uh, last result with the uh, fatigue result, and then you could correlate, correlate this fatigue result to the <laughs> mixture result. So, uh, I mean, the last, uh, the last approach um, induces a lot of potential bias uh, because it's accelerated at really high amplitude. And I think it, uh, there, there are all the, the, the reversible phenomena that are occurring at the same time just a simple analysis of its static its damage uh, damage so it's static damage and uh, you can take um, so I think it's not I think it's uh, you, you can do it and see what you have but um, probably no I, I, I won't say probably but it's possible that it's not uh, accurate Would you recommend to to modify the interface behavior to improve the, the, the mechanical performances of materials? Uh, and how? Because your the procedure you use is not completely uh, usable in an industrial scale. So how how will you do that? So um, I would uh, buy a lot of uh, alcohol. Uh, I would, they didn't hear. Uh, no, I would. I would uh, maybe buy a lot of alcohol. Um, no, I. I. I, um, I think that uh, the procedure. Obviously, the procedure we designed. We, we discussed that. But the procedure we designed is really not uh, applicable to uh, the industrial uh, uh, size. Um, Let's say for a plant or a, a, a mixture plant. So um, it should be improved and simplified a lot. And I think it's a it's a really it's an engineer work. I think it's a chemi uh, yeah a chemist uh, engineer work, work uh, because the surface modification is really complex and to, to, to be optimized. I didn't I didn't have the knowledge to do it in my business. And uh, that's a pity, I think, but it's uh, how it is. So uh, no, definitely, I think it, it could be greatly improved and really simplified because this, the siding I used were really expensive and they were perfect. But maybe you can go, you can go with uh, industrial siding with really low quantities uh, in the vapor. I don't know with a uh, with a vapor uh, when you when you heat them possibly without water because there is sensitization possible without water actually. Um, in my in my procedure, the water was used because uh, it favors the the link between the surface um, of the aggregate and the, the siding. But there, are, I know that the, the reaction is not requiring actual actual uh, water. So maybe you could do it in a vapor phase. Um, but it was it, it is it was really, really a a question that goes beyond my uh, my capability. But we always discuss that, so I know. Yeah, it was just a question. But maybe, maybe, maybe the, only the ethanol is sufficient because we we've, we've seen that you you got a slight improvement in, uh, in fatigue performance. So it's it's not the the, the ethanol do not cost much. Okay, thank you for your response. I give the mic to the president. <laughs> for this uh, last discussion. Uh, so before giving uh, uh, the thought to your supervisors, I guess uh, I will have myself some remark. Uh, actually, uh, this is not my 
very field of expertise, but uh, however, I also have some curiosity, I would say, that stems from your thesis and presentation. Uh, so in the beginning, for example, uh, you make a three-point bending test on a specimen which has a very strange shape. It's two-point so, bending, yes. Uh, two-point bending, okay. Right. So uh, you have a strange shape. Why is that? Is this a reason for having this shape? Is this a standard test for, uh, for this kind of material? And if you know uh, the reason. So, asymmetric um, shape. Yes, actually, it's a good question um, because there is also the prismatic shape where you don't have uh, this trapezoid, trapezoidal specimen. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I don't, I don't really know. Oh, you, uh, you should know. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, the difference between the the, 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 the prism and the and the tra uh, trapezoidal specimen because you. I'm just thinking about that no, no. I can think about that. No, I, I, I think I have the, I have the answer, the, the answer uh, but I don't have it anymore. But so is that a standard shape yes. for this kind of test? Yes, but that, why, why is it perfect? Yeah. No, I mean, okay. the analysis is it's quite clear. We, it, it's just a, it's just a, a beam and uh, we, we, I, I, we can relate the, the force. No, no, for sure, once you know the, the shape and the. Yes, you, you the can setting. relate the force and the displacement to the, to the, to the strain and, and the stress. So. Okay, but this is true also if the uh, displacement is symmetric. So I just was wondering for this kind of material why uh, it's chosen like this. I, usually I don't see this kind of shape. But. Uh, I think I. We can answer. It's very, very simple. But if, when it's prismatic, the maximum momentum is, is in the blue at the base. Mm -hmm. There's this special shape because the maximum strain and momentum is at uh, I think one one fourth or one fifth from the from the from the from the from the, the, yeah. the sound of the edge. And this test is also used for fatigue, so you have the maximum strain that you can measure. Oh, this is a special shape. It was specially designed and it's the French standard used since many years. It was this for this kind of material too. So for this kind of material, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it was just a curiosity, no, no problem. You got uh, that on that one. Yeah. <laughs> so then another kind of curiosity at the point uh, as a uh, you use as an aggregate some dust beads. Uh, so uh, why is that? Why are you using such regular shapes? Is for comparing to something, make an academic uh, study, or is something which is used in construction? So it's, uh, okay, it's not, yes. So it's not used in construction. Um, we wanted to to have a model mastic. Uh, so something with a regular shape, as you said, and um, primer, um, it was so the glass bead was a good solution to increase the potentiality of uh, the surface modification. Also, this is one of uh, the reasons we use glass beads because it's made out of silica, and uh, the, the silica um, is uh, is the, the, the element to which the silane, which I used. Actually, bound. So um, this is why it was a good. And also, we want to have a, a model mastic, uh, for instance, to be able to, to do multi-scale uh, calculation. Um, it's it's uh, convenient to have a regular shape of uh, aggregate and not uh, a group a complex grading curve. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see. So and two reasons. Yeah, two reasons. Yeah, yeah. So also for this story of aggregates, you are uh, you try different types of aggregates. So what about uh, the choices of these aggregates? Are they conceived in TPU or are they standards used 
aggregating construction? How do you choose? Um, so these aggregates are um, used uh, by FH for their own construction. So that's why, okay. so I, as they provided uh, all the materials of my thesis, I used the, the obviously their their aggregates. Okay. Okay, then one question was addressed was always all the, it was the already addressed twice, which is the fact of the damage and healing. It was quite surprising for me to see that you have a damage uh, parts during load and then unloading you have healing. So maybe a bit uh, small remark extra to what was said. Uh, did you think to look at what's happening, like by looking with a microscope, or I don't know, or is it invisible? Uh, um, this is something I, I really want to do, but uh, it's really hard to look at microscope, uh, to look at vigilance with micro microscope because it's black and it's not uh, transparent. So um, if we if we were to find any um, cracks. Uh, on the microstructural level, um, in the bitumen, it could be a, on a really thin film that we, we can actually see through. So um, this is something uh, that mainly could be done, but appears technically uh, really hard. But okay. definitely, um, may, it would be a great thing to correlate um, our interpretation, which is not the truth, but uh, I would like to correlate that with an actual uh, evaluation of the microstructure. Well, because space. in any case, you have um, you are recovering your initial models. Yes. Experimentally. So it's uh, it would be interesting to see what's happening. Yes. Because, especially, yeah. especially. Uh, I, I don't think it's possible, but especially the possibly the uh, stitch shape. You know, of the you, you get micro cracks and and it uh, it start to heal, and uh, you get this uh, little bound that that create that may be created. But uh, yeah. it's, it's not yeah, something that I've done. I, I don't think, I don't know if, I, if, if we can do it. Uh, it's not something I'm, I'm really, uh, um, I'm, I'm not a specialist of the microstructure and the, the image, image technique. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if it's possible, but I would like to, to, to know, yes. Let me make a comment on this. I believe in the, I don't know what Dr. Benedetto, the Benedetto also thinks about than others. For the asphalt mixture, the fatigue cracking, is cracks that open up uh, and interpret it as a crack. So you can model it like fracture type crack. For the asphalt finder at the temperatures that were used here, which is I think 30 degrees C, I don't think there is even crack per se in the asphalt binder at these temperatures. I think it's damage of the bonding of the binder, the fatigue crack in this case. Mm -hmm. Rather than a crack opening at 30 35 degrees C. Yeah. We go to freezing temperatures, yes, I, I, I believe there will be, when you go to the uh, freezing temperature, there will be cracks, and we've seen it. But at high and just temperatures, I've never seen a crack uh, in the microscope, in the microscopy. In that. It is at 10 degrees. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, yes, yeah. The, the 10 degrees at the end of the test, you can see the, the cracks. Yeah, and find that. So we don't know. I don't know. Really, I don't know. At the beginning, I, I, I didn't, uh, I didn't believe that I could have micro crack within the bitumen at that temperature. But now I doubt a little bit because of the, some reasons we have, and especially the one from Gabriel. Because at the end of the test, there is a crack in the in the steel. So I don't know. In fact, it's really a mystery for me. Yeah. At, 10 degree, at 10 degree, I think you will have, uh, you may have crack, but I think you run it at what temperature, the binder? 20, 30, was it? No, no, 10 degrees. 10? 10 degrees. I'm, I'm looking for a photo. I mean, you know, it's, it's, I, I think that's an excellent question, uh, Angela. I mean, mm. I, I don't, we all, always call it fatigue cracking. But we usually do fatigue cracking in the US at 20, 22, 25. Mm -hmm. At those temperatures, you don't see cracks. So you don't I agree with you. I agree with you. But um, uh, Professor Massad, are you talking about cracks in the binder phase 
within the mixture or just in the bulk between only, only binder, only binder, only binder, even binder, only binder, no mixture, just the binder in the yeah. DSR, like when you want the protein cracking. When you oh, but so what I wanted to say maybe for the perspectives that you listed, that could be an interesting thing to look at because it's not intuitive at all and this healing uh, it's, uh, it appears quite magic <laughs> at this stage like okay so for instance this is the type of uh, crack i obtained micro macro crack i obtained at the end of uh, the fatigue test with asr mm -hmm. and this is this is only vitamin this is it's only vitamin only vitamin at 10 degrees, yeah? Sorry. Yes. 10 degrees yes. C. 10, de yes. 10. 10, 10, 10, 10 degrees C, yes. 10 hertz. Yeah, 10 hertz, that's a lot of frequency, and 10 degree. So if uh, that is, that is, yes, uh, I agree what you see. But when we, when usually, when we do fatigue cracking for PG grading, it's 22, 25, right? In Canada, there will be less, maybe 20, 18, and the fatigue. And those temperatures you don't see crack like you see it here, but still we call it fatigue cracking, which I... There is a flow at this temperature, it's a flow. Yes. Okay. Yes. You see, Angela, this material is incredible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sorry for asking, I don't think we are no, starting really this question. now. We yeah. questions. I, I think we should ask more of them. Yeah. We have time. So, uh, maybe this is a good perspective to uh, unveil. Uh, then there is this uh, no sleeping interface condition that uh, astonishes me a bit because as Hervé was saying, the rock is very stiff and the other material is very soft. So how do you guarantee this condition? For me, it's a bit strange, but you say that your results finally are uh, agreeing with the experiment. Yes. So, uh, did you check experimentally somehow that the condition was satisfied? Mm -hmm. um, I don't see how I can ensure that there is no sleeping at all, uh, experimentally speaking, because mm -hmm. the simulation was using this hypothesis of no sleeping. So, if there, there because when you are gluing the two materials, how are you doing experimentally? Speaking, you are putting them in contact, or there is some glue, or so here. Like so, so the glue is is a bitumen. So this is the, mm -hmm. this is the binder. Um, it's just simply, it's quite simple. I, I just, um, I just pour hot bitumen at hot temperature, so it's it's almost liquid, it's liquid, and uh, mm -hmm. then I I uh, put the the second cylinder here. You can see, uh, it's it's not mm -hmm. too small. Yeah, yeah. And mm -hmm. you, you can see that the bitumen the overflow mm -hmm. the the, the um, and there is too much vitamin here, so it's overflow. So we, we have uh, this film, which is the binder between our two rock cylinders. And um, so there is no, no the sleeping would be between the vitamin and the aggregate. And uh, yeah. I don't I don't think that when you have a huge aspect ratio, I don't see how it can move because because if it would would, would uh, slip. Um, you would have bitumen flowing out. Yeah. I mean, yeah, but I mean, how how the how the most of the bitumen perfect, flows out? I mean, not uh, perfect matching of the displacement. Still, you could have not uh, not perfect matching of the displacement in the two materials, but it's possible. Okay. But it's, it's really hard to, to to check, and I think I think if, again, if we if we look at first at this simulation. Um, sorry. Um, no, I can. I think we can answer rapidly because mm -hmm. I doesn't know bitumen. Bitumen is a very sticky. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. It's incredible. It's incredible. I mean, mm -hmm. it cannot move. Mm -hmm. Treat the surface. Um, okay, I see. Yeah, yeah. So for this, I yeah. ask. On dit que le bitume est très attachant. Uh -huh. <laughs> in, uh, okay. mm -hmm. But it, it could flow at, at high temperature, maybe. <laughs> maybe. I mean, it, it could flow out at high, high temperature, but I don't see how it how it's possible at, at the, the temperature I, I tested. Mm -hmm. but I see. For this, I asked if there was a glue, but actually, okay. Uh, 
<laughs> okay, so that was it. And maybe just a last curiosity uh, about uh, modeling, because you made a lot of, it, of experiments and it was uh, remarked by everyone. Uh, but what about modeling? Did you get interested in something? I saw you showed some rheological models, but they were de developed before. Uh, were you interested in some modeling aspect some, somehow, uh, or you just was entirely focused uh, on experiments? Um, so um, I was, the goal of the purpose of my thesis was not to look at uh, modeling uh, specifically. It was mainly about experiments, as you said. Um, the model, the LE, for instance, the linear viscosity model we use was developed and used by our team uh, for a long time. Uh, so I didn't include any novelty uh, on this uh, model. Um, so no, even, even for, uh, even for uh, the result with uh, all these, uh, I mean, yeah, the only contribution maybe would be the, the correction of the, the effects of uh, the different mm -hmm. reversible phenomena, which is a model in itself. But uh, this is the only contribution on the modeling part, I would say. Okay, thanks. Well, thank you very much for answering. And uh, now you, you will have your two supervisors. I don't think they will have technical questions to leave. But uh, uh, maybe Dr. Soza. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Um, yes, I don't have uh, any question for uh, Gabriel. We have a lot of discussion. We had a lot of discussion during his PhD, so we won't have any question now. Just want to speak about a little bit about the context. Uh, we need to thank uh, the com A Flash company, which uh, followed us in our uh, sometimes crazy high days. Uh, there was a lot of uh, there were a lot of uh, objectives in this uh, PhD, but the, the main one was, uh, as Gabriel uh, tried to explain, was to, to link the uh, fatigue and the, the, the adhesion between the bitumen and the, and the, and the aggregate. Uh, but the, the objectives of NFH was also to test a lot of uh, materials, of their materials, obviously. Um, and so sometimes uh, this, uh, this may explain why there are so many campaigns because Gabriel was interested in uh, analyzing a lot of tests, but uh, it, it is more or less classical tests. And so the analysis is not so interesting. He wanted to do science and that's why he, he started to, 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 yeah, to learn a lot about uh, addition tests and so on. And uh, he performed tests in a, another part of the lab with another team, uh, which what this test was not uh, in his uh, how to say ability when he started the uh, when he started the PhD. So he need to learn a lot, and that's maybe explain why there is so many uh, so many parts in in his PhD. Uh, another point is that uh, when uh, if I wanted to add uh, one materials on their side. On our side, we wanted to add uh, one campaign. <laughs> this was the deal, <laughs> more or less. So we need to thank uh, Ifash to help us. Uh, we we are doing. Uh, we we have uh, industrial. We try to have industrial objectives in our PhD, which we also try to um, explain and uh, observe phenomena, and uh, so to do science. So thank you, Gabriel, and uh, this is what I wanted to, to say. So. Thank you very much. So finally, we leave the stage to have if you have some final comments. Okay. Obviously, I will uh, have no question, and I think uh, everything, most of things was said by, by Cedric about the context. I must thank uh, Epage for uh, the, part, the long partnership 
this relationship and, and friendship. And uh, this partnership uh, really helped us in, uh, in doing uh, advanced research and uh, more new development. And this support is very appreciated. As you understood, uh, uh, all the experimental question was discussion. And we had discussion with an industrial company and a research lab. And, of course, you have the explanation why you, you have, why you have campaign one, which is a classical approach uh, with uh, rather uh, uh, practical results that you can use in practice, and then uh, more fundamentals, the new tests and the signalization that are more on our side the research. And I must say that uh, Gabriel made a, a great a great job in uh, in doing all this thing and in in, in succeeding. <laughs> of answering the question from really, really different uh, uh, origins. I want to say that uh, it was very agreeable to work with him. And uh, he, he, is, uh, he is very agreeable and uh, dynamic and uh, okay. with a good mood. He has a good mood and uh, brings a new, brings a good atmosphere. And within the, the team of uh, PhDs, it's uh, always, there is always great support and a good atmosphere and good mood. And it's thanks to all the team and especially uh, thanks to, to Gabriele. And we could say that, uh, in fact, he's like bitumen, huh? he's very attachant in French. <laughs> it's a special word. <laughs> play with word. You see, attachant is. Uh, Quiet. Don't think they know. How do we say? How do we say? Quiet. What do you say? Quiet. No, when you speak, uh, it's, it's sticky, sticky. That is a good sign. That is that is uh, very nice, and if you like to be, you like him. It's it's a boss. So so be careful not to not to become too, too black because you look like bitten. <laughs> but <laughs> we have some stuff to today. It's okay, no, it's a joke. So thank you, thank you, Ivan. Thank you, Gabriel. Thank you, thank you very much. So I think uh, we are done with questions. Uh, now the, the committee should uh, talk alone to uh, deliberate and then we communicate with the decision. So you should disconnect somehow. Yes. So we will leave the room actually, so you can speak yeah. freely. Okay. And, okay. Uh, the public and I will leave the room. Very good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And okay, when do you guys require the student to write the dissertation in English when it's in French? It's a micro. It's a micro.
Oh. But that was good. To delegate myself, I was like, okay, so this is for president. I mean, the president don't have to sign. Yeah. Ah, here is your oh, candidate. Yeah. Okay. Oh. We are ready to tell me when everything is set to. Yeah, it's good. So uh, the jury has discussed about your defense. Uh, we have deliberated that the presentation has been comprehensive, professionally presented, technically sound, and covered all the aspects treated in the thesis. You presented a big amount of accurate experimental work covering different aspects of thermomechanical behavior of bituminous materials. You showed excellent knowledge of the address topic and confidence in answering all the numerous questions of the committee in a pedagogic way. The presentation showed good balance between experimental work and analysis. And this research work is uh, excellent in terms of both breadth and depth. So, for all these reasons, the committee unanimously uh, uh, gives to you, awards to you, the degree of uh, PhD uh, of uh, University of Lyon. I guess. And the so, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you for all the, the people on the, the member of the jury. Is it my, uh, my speech or? Yeah, no. I don't want to share then the. So, um, do you hear me well? Yeah. Okay. So, first of all, I wish to thank uh, all the jury members for evaluating my work, uh, especially uh, Professor Carter and uh, Professor Massad for the tremendous work uh, of re reviewing my thesis um, and bringing up very interesting remarks and questions that uh, we have perfectly in my work. Um, I am sure that the uh, non-French non speaking parts of the audience will understand I prefer to switch French for the rest of my uh, speech. Indeed, I will quote, uh, I will quote um, the French philosopher, philosopher uh, Sébastien Chaval, once declared with the best accent possible, we are in France, we speak French. 
So this guy, this guy also happens to be a, a rugby player uh, more than a philosopher. That's why. Hence the quote. Je passe en français maintenant. Quand on arrive, quand on arrive au sommet d'une montagne, il faut prendre le temps d'apprécier le chemin emprunté. Il y a des raisons pour lesquelles ils sont parvenus au bout. Pour moi, cette thèse était une très bonne montagne, donc je vais regarder un petit peu en arrière. Alors, tout d'abord, je tiens à, je tiens à commencer par, par apprécier notre système, en particulier l'école républicaine et ses serviteurs. À qui la combe l'immense tâche d'instruire et de former l'ensemble de ses citoyens, tout en croisant le chemin de professeurs passionnés, que j'ai pris le goût de la connaissance, euh, que j'ai pris le goût pour la connaissance, qui m'a finalement poussé vers la recherche. Cette école républicaine ne doit pas être prise en compte, prise pour acquise, euh, comme les derniers éléments tragiques que nous avons brutalement rappelé. Donc je profite de cette tribune pour le rappeler. Si l'on regarde euh, la genèse et le cours de ma, de ma thèse, euh, mon travail n'aurait pas été possible sans le, le concours de deux organisations, mon laboratoire et, et mon partenaire de page. Et à ce titre, je veux remercier les investigateurs et les acteurs de, de, de partenariat, euh, en, part, en particulier Simon Pouget, François Ollard, euh, Simon Baudouin, Stéphane Dupuyer et Frédéric Nou, ainsi que tous les techniciens qui ont fourni un heure de travail pour que je passe mes nuits à, à analyser les précieuses données. Euh, je veux remercier mes, mes, mes directeurs de thèse, Hervé et Cédric, euh, impeccables de rigueur, et, euh, m'ont toujours poussé à donner le meilleur de mes capacités et qui étaient toujours disponibles pour me le Donc à tous mes collègues doctorants, je vous dis également merci. Euh, un travail aussi pointu euh, et long n'aurait pas été le même euh, en autarcie sans échange passionné. À ceux d'entre eux qui sont euh, devenus mes amis pendant cette thèse, ainsi qu'à tous mes autres amis avec sa distance, euh, merci de votre présence et de votre soutien en toutes circonstances. Euh, à ma famille, euh, qui j'espère participe activement au concours de fond d'écran Zoom euh, dans le public. Et euh, bah, pour, leur, pour leur soutien, euh, je vous dis merci et à très bientôt. À mes parents, euh, pour tout ce qu'ils vont faire, à mes frères et moi, et puis à mes mères, je vous aime bien Merci. Mais je vais dire quand même en citant un autre philosophe français qui préfère. Euh, c'est tout amateur de boxe ou de rugby. Donc, je vais citer Albert Camus qui disait que, que mal nommer des choses, c'est ajouter au malheur du monde. Euh, je pourrais dire que j'ai eu la chance d'être aujourd'hui, mais en réalité, euh, je crois qu'il convient beaucoup plus de dire que j'ai eu la chance de croiser autant de belles personnes qui m'ont aidé à le dire. Euh, le reste était assez naturel. Merci. Ça vient. Ouais, ouais, ça vient, ça vient. Ok, vous avez branché. We will do, we will do, we will do a, a, a photography. Um, I just put you on the big screen. And uh, uh, we can give you the, the, the photograph of the book. Yeah, just on the, the picture. Sure, yes. Who's the photograph? Yeah. So we are on the screen, yeah. and this is exactly the picture. <laughs> first, first with the jury and then with the team. The jury and then the team. Yes, 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 I want to have the picture. Je vais en prendre une, elle est un peu loin. Smile. Ouais. C'est bon. Ouais. Vous voulez mettre Lucas Il n'y a, de... a pas moyen d'allumer la partie là parce qu'en fait c'est super son. Hein. Si c'est possible, ce serait.
Bon, du coup, c'est un peu blanc l'écran là-haut, mais c'est pas grave. Ouais, bon. Ouais, c'est là, c'est très sombre. Alors, en fait, c'est le simple. Très bien. Allez, nickel. Ok, we have the picture. C'est bon. Good. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, Angela, on se voit dans. Gabriel, nice meeting you, uh, Angela. Good seeing you, Alan. And, uh, uh, before you go, before you go, uh, I'm just uh, wanted to add that I'm still looking for a PhD uh, postdoc position. <laughs> 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 we will be touching the, the time. The time are, are pretty hard, so I'm just uh, I'm just leaving it uh, there. Okay. <laughs> Jean-Claude, we've already talked about it. Just say, oh no, no, no. Okay. Bon, je vous invite tous au groupe de thèse qui a été organisé par euh, par l'organisation. C'était pour vous l'alcool qu'on a tourné deux fois. Ah bon Je vais partir avant 21 h Du coup, on est là ou Non, non, on descend. On va arrêter de venir. Ouais, ça veut dire voir un peu. Ah, c'est vrai. Ça va pas prendre. Allez, bien, c'est comme il manager. C'est bon, ça filme en cours ou pas Ouais. Bon, merci à tous d'avoir suivi sur YouTube. N'oubliez pas de vous abonner. Pouce bleu, la cloche, tout ça. Allez, à plus. Félicitations, Gab. Merci. Hey, alors. Il y a du monde encore là ou pas Ouais, bah attends, je crois que tu peux même. Salut Yasmina, comment ça va Qui c'est qu'il y a Ah oui, il est là. C'est Mounir. C'est bon, Mounir, Mounir t'es resté jusqu'au bout, toi Ouais, j'ai coupé que certains bouts, mais j'ai assisté au début, un peu au milieu, puis à la fin. D'accord. Hey, Mounir, je t'ai vu sur Zoom en voiture, sérieusement. Ouais, <rire> ouais. Question, Gabriel. Départ, hein. Félicitations, Gab. C'était très bien. Allez, au revoir, Gab. À la prochaine. Je vais arrêter hein. <rire>